Today on Homeworthy, we embark on a coastal escapade. We're taking you through five distinct seaside homes, each boasting its own unique character. We start with a modern three-level haven in California and end with a Newport, Rhode Island mansion defined by the constant sound of waves. I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. To access all of this exclusive content, simply click the Join button below to become a member today. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Patrick. Welcome to my home in La Jolla, California. Come on in and take a look. I'm Allison Kenworthy, the founder of Homeworthy, and we're now offering a membership plan that gives our supporters early and exclusive access to new videos. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Roz. You're here at my home in Los Angeles. Come on in, I can't wait to show you around. With this membership, we invite you to open more doors, discovering new homes, rooms, and personalities available only to those with the keys to our guest house. You'll be part of a community of people who are just as passionate as you are about interior design. To access all of this exclusive content, simply click the Join button below to become a member today. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Hi, I'm Patrick Wade. Welcome to my home in La Jolla, California. The house we're living in now is was redone completely from the ground up about four years ago, and we bought it almost two years ago, and we've done a lot of work ourselves, brightening it up, lightening it up, bringing, um, giving more of a coastal feel, and making it warmer and more comfortable to live in. It's a very modern, three level, tons of windows. I don't know if there's an actual style I would call it. It's, um, it's, you know, it's a very wide open space. Again, lots of light. Um, and it's just, an, you know, an amazing beach house. When we bought this home, we really had to think about it because it looked very different than it does now. It was much darker. I mean, we love the, you know, the aesthetic of it, where the location, you know, what we knew it could be, but it actually did need a lot of, not a, you know, needed quite a bit of work to, for us to feel comfortable here. And it just seemed like the interior didn't match the rest of what the house should be. So we wanted to bring it to kind of how, you know, you want to live at the beach, at the coast. You want to be, you know, simple and clean and bright and happy and comfortable. So I think that's what we did. I live here with my husband, Dave. We've been together over 40 years in our little dachshund, Penny. Hi guys, welcome to my home. We're on the main level, the middle level actually of the floor. The house is three levels. And on this level we have our main bedroom and then what we call our den or office. So I'm gonna take you through that. But first is this kind of unusual like entry space where, you know, as you're coming up the stairs, um, you kind of want a moment that kind of anchors the space. So we've done a, you know, this beautiful, it's actually, it's ivory table made out of piano keys with this um, vintage mirror and just again making a strong statement and kind of in the color palette of all neutrals, black, gold, white, gray. Um, one of the things I do in every home we have 
is um, seagrass rugs with twill tape. And I've done many variations on the tape. I've done navy, red, leather. I've done black. I've done gray. And then this house, since again, it's so much white and such a beachy feeling. I did, I did an ivory color tape. And it's actually perennials fabric, which is more durable and will hold up better against traffic. So again, as you walk up, you, had, you see the stairway with the seagrass runner and then another of the same fabric. These were all custom made for the house. And then there's a little seating area here to the right of a pair of chairs, a little more formal moment, just kind of setting the tone for the house. Um, you see a group of beautiful, of, I think beautiful, cool black and white images. Here's the Prince, and, Prince of Wales. Um, an old shot from Banana Republic days, um, Audrey Hepburn shot by Stephen Mizell. There's a powder room here, which is very sweet, kind of unusual, but it's really off the, de off the patio, so guests have a powder room there available. This guy um, we've had, we bought in New York, really with a friend of ours. He thought we, sh we should have it, and we have lugged him from house to house. Um, he's a carved, carved wood. We just love the way he feels and he kind of lives here with us wherever we're at. And he's just got a kind of this kind of soulful feeling. He like a, he almost, it seems a little religious, but he, it's not. He's just become our friend. So he's always with us wherever we go. We have a Ralph Gibson, this beautiful photograph of a large image of this woman's neck, which I think is totally sexy and unusual. We bought it in London, very cool. Um, a pair of George Smith chairs, um, and then we go into uh, the entry of the bedroom. Going into our bedroom, one of the things I love about this room and the way the house is designed is the floors. They have these beautiful ma marble floors with this lattice work pattern inset. It's in both the entry into the bedroom and in the bathroom. So that was one of the things about the house. It was already here that we loved, and they spent a lot of time and money to make that happen. So as you come in, again, a little vestibule into the bedroom. The room has a lot of light, a lot of windows. You can look out and see the ocean. Um, I think it's a very calming space. I think it's a cool mix of furniture, of wicker and um, painted wood, the seagrass rugs again, uh, um, this vintage zebra bench, upholstered bed. Again, it's all in shades of cream and black and white with touches of blue that we've collected forever, all blue and white. These are antique blue and white jars. Um, Christopher Spitzmiller lamps, which I love, this beautiful Prussian blue. A comfortable seating area, I hang out here in the morning. This is an old vintage dresser that I painted white with, um, I love the octagon leather mirror. So just all these mixtures of textures and colors. You know, nothing is matched or too coordinated. I love mixing furniture together old and new, light and dark, wood and texture and fabric. I mean, so it's all about the mix and making it, you know, cohesively sit together. This guy, uh, an English country gentleman, we bought in New York that we've had for a long time with his dog. And it's just, you know, I love, I love portraits. I love the feeling of old people living in the house with you. You know, like I said earlier, you know, to me, there are no rules. There's no like, oh, it's coastal, whatever that means. I got it that it's near the beach, but it's still your home. And it's still about things that you love and things you own or are proud of or want to have around you. So it's all about the mix to me. I think, you know, I think he's um, just, you know, I feel good looking at him. <laughs> he's just, you know, again, it's like add some age to things. I don't want everything too new or too matching or too predictable. You know, it's all again about the mix of everything. And I like everything, kind of a masculine vibe and not, you know, not too decorated, not too old lady or granny, which is, you know, it can easily get to. So I like it being a little sexy and a little cool and like, and about the mix of it. You know, as we go through the house, you'll see I have a, we have thou almost probably a thousand design books that I've collected over the years. And one of the hardest parts when we move is the books and how do we, <laughs> handle all moving all these books which are quite heavy um, I have this thing I do books by color and then people may think it's weird but I don't really I don't buy books because of the color I just think it's there's something more calming about seeing them together but they're all about design or travel or places or um, art 
you know, if you look at the titles, it's, you know, fashion, interiors, photography, um, everything. And as we go room to room, you'll see that there is a whole red story. There's a whole neutrals upstairs. But again, I think books, you know, in Auntie Mame, they say books are, she says books are so decorative, but they are, you know, they are decorative. But I, I read every book. David, I, I really read the books. I, you know, I don't want to say I study them, but I've been very inspired by books. And we actually have a, we're building a beautiful selection of books in our store, Mood Indigo. Actually, it is not real. <laughs> I brought it from the store, um, to be honest. And I just thought it would add it a little green. We, we've done very well with them in the store. But they're really, I mean, faux plants, I, the old days, I never would have put faux plants in my house ever. I would have been like, there's no way. But they're so beautiful now and they're so well done that I do think they add color and life and, you know, a feeling that you wouldn't have. You know, plants come and go, they die, it's a lot of work. So, you know, they're all so beautiful now. I think they, they do add a lot to a room. You know, I don't really um, understand or really adhere to any style or design, you know, niche, whatever you want to call it. You know, we've had a lot of beautiful homes. We've collected tons of art, photography, and furniture. And, um, you know, we've had many different houses. We've had a traditional homes. We've had Napa Valley more wine country homes, country type of homes. We've had houses in cities. You know, this is our first real beach house. So we've, we spent a lot of time editing what we own and selecting what we thought was perfect for here. And we really made a very neutral, I mean, I guess you would call it modern, but again, it's very warm and comfortable and you can hang out, but it, you know, it's a lot of white. It's all neutral colors. We have, you'll see later, we have a little bit of blue in the, in the guest room and in the main bedroom, but you know, it's a relaxed, modern, casual vibe, I would say, you know, but it, but it pretty sophisticated still, you know, because again, we have a lot of beautiful art. We have a lot of beautiful antiques and we mix with modern things. So it's all about mixing everything to me and making it your own. There is actually a lot of stuff in here, but I think it's very well curated and, and presented. You know, I did visual merchandising for many, many years and a lot of big retail brands. So that's kind of my forte and that's kind of my thing is how we present things and telling stories. So you'll see, you know, it's, it's not like just done. It's like kind of a mix of things that you may not expect, but again, it all sits together and it all looks, I think, really great. And um, so I think it is very personal with everything we've collected over the years. Before we go on to the den, let's just pop in the bathroom and I can show you um, how it was designed. Again, here's this floor, which I was talking about, which I love with the lattice work, the black board, inset border. Again, I think, you know, it's great to have your bathroom feel like, you know, it's part of the house. And using art in bathrooms, I'm a big believer of putting like beautiful paintings on the wall, um, accessorizing it, beautiful lighting. I think all those things make, you know, you spend so much time in the bathroom, it's such an important part of the home that you want it to feel like another room and just not this utilitarian, boring, bummer place. So I think it's about decorating it and making it feel like a, I love lamps and rooms, bathrooms. I mean, it, it just everything as you would do in a do in a regular room, I think you should do also bring to your bathroom. There is a piece of art there was all this sculpture in the house on the outside that was part of that was built into the house that we took out. And there was a sculpture right here that was built into the wall that we couldn't get out. So I built, I had this box built over this piece of art, which we did not want in the bathroom. And I had it again, had it made and then I put a piece of art over it, which I think was pretty clever to conceal it myself. In the bathroom, we did not renovate the bathroom. It was basically just painting and changing the lights, lighting and, you know, window coverings and, and art, and that's it pretty much. So here we are in our den um, slash office. Again, we tried to make a cozy, comfortable environment, but kind of keeping it clean. And then we can talk about the color, the use of color in this room. You know, it's been pretty, you'll see the rest of the house is pretty neutral. We had a little blue accents in the, in the bedroom. And then here it's all about adding this layers of red um, in both the bookshelves and the books in accessories. 
you know, it's basically a neutral background with pops of color. And that's how I like to work is that you basically, you know, your larger pieces are neutrals and it's great to layer on color either through accessories, books, pillows, throws, you know, things like the art. So as you can see, we have a cool, I think a more modern sofa with this, this really great Kaleem Ottoman, a pair of very modern chairs, and then a simple glass desk with more photography. And, um, and here's a bookcase again with all the red and all the mix of things that we've collected over the years. Dave is a consultant for an interior designer and he helps run his business, so he operates out of here. Um, on his desk are just small things we've collected through the years, different paperweights, et cetera, boxes, you know, things that he loves and, and wants to keep around him. One of the interesting things I think about this room is this large photograph of the swimmer, which we've had for a long time in storage, and we found the perfect spot, so we're excited to have this space to hang this giant photograph of a swimmer, which seems great at the beach. On our ottoman here, the way I, you know, the way I look at surfaces for tables is I love to do a lot of things. You know, there's kind of a formula for how to dress tables, I think. I think, you know, trays are a great way to start. You know, they give you, they anchor a space, they can find things. You'll see throughout the house, I do trays everywhere. And so trays, books, accessories. So, you know, one of the oldest visual tricks is kind of this pyramid idea where it's always like kind of, you have a high and three, a middle area and then a low. Um, so if you look, it's always kind of built up that way to make like tablescapes as they've been called before. Um, there's a lot of pattern on here. So I wanted to keep it simple in one big book. A, um, this is an old antique zebra tray. And then this is just, you know, inexpensive. I love the texture of it. I love, nat I love natural weave. I love woven products. I love the layers, the layer to layer with texture. So you'll see again through the out the house, we always have layers of, of texture and natural fibers. We have one thing, we have a little collection of our dachshunds because we do have a dachshund, a little different variations of little dachshunds. We have John, I mean, Hugo Guinnesses. This is kind of a funny one, a pair of underwear. Um, we have the glasses. Um, we've collected Hugo Guinness for many, many years. He's a British illustrator, a British illustrator that we love. This, again, is an amazing artist from Napa, Ira Yeager, who just recently passed away. We have another one um, downstairs, um, and he was just this really um, talented man who actually we met up in St. Helena, who painted, you know, very country you know, roosters and fruits. And he did a whole series of Indians too. And I love this painting. You know, I've been in retail almost 30 something years, starting at the Gap um, in visual merchandising. Um, and then I went into marketing with the Gap and did a lot of um, fashion shoots for the brand. We went to J. Crew, where I was in visual merchandising, merchandising, and I also did product development for them. I designed men's woven men's wove shirts. Um, we went on to Coach in New York, and I was in charge of store design and visual merchandising, and I, I painted all the existing, my big claim to fame is painting all the existing stores white. They were very masculine and very dark. So to make them more feminine and sexy and happier, we painted all the existing stores white and brought a more of a fashion flow to the brand. We left New York and came back to California. We went to work for William Sonoma and we were instrumental in the launching of West Elm and William Sonoma Home. My husband and I ran the company, ran the business. I designed the stores. So um, again, a lot of hands-on experience of you know, dealing with product and merchandising and display and store design. You know, we've been here a couple years and we thought we were retired and we were just going to, you know, basically hang out. I started surfing lessons. I was going to, you know, I thought that's what we would be doing, but we found a great location um, just a block away and we opened a little store called Mood Indigo. It's this kind of, bo I don't want to say boho, but coastal, beachy, but sophisticated mix of accessories and rugs and throws and pillows and everything you need to make your house a home and to add all those layers that I've been talking about I love so much, you know, bringing comfort and style to your home.
my surf instructor though is we've got he's a photographer and we're actually we have his photographs in our store now which is really cool and it's the first time he's ever shown his work or anything so again it's all part of like building all these relationships and getting to know people and you know okay guys how about we go upstairs and i'll show you the rest of the house so as we come upstairs the first thing you notice is how bright it is i mean you know, we have these amazing, I want to say 360, but not really 180 views of the ocean. So that was one of the big things we loved about the house, obviously, is the view. Uh, we can go over here into the living room, which you really get the sense of, of how neutral and how clean it is and how we're using photography to add warmth and decor to, this, to the room. Um, this is, we're doing slip covers. This is an old George Smith settee that I did a slip cover on. If you can see, it's actually another fabric, but the slip coverage is more casual. Um, I love all the black and white photographies with the matching frames. I think that's a good trick to use is frames of the same color. They help coordinate a, a story. So we have the natural wood frame here. If you look at here, all these frames all have white or ivory frames for all the images. Again, I love a collage of all the Im images as you come up the stairway. We wallpapered the, the hallway and the sitting room up here with Philip Jeffries is this white. We usually do more of a raffia color paper, but I wanted it really bright and really pure. So it's just, you can barely see it. It's very subtle, but it's a white raffia paper. Coming into the living room, I actually drew this on a piece of paper, the layout of it where I wanted the center round table, a seating area of four chairs, and then a pair of so small love seat sofas. So that's what we did. Um, the lighting is, you know, anchored in the corner with the bigger lamps. There's one console piece here with another pair of lamps. And the kind of the show piece is the fireplace with this beautiful marble front. So again, it's very symmetrical, but again, think by layering and, and adding accessories and texture you make it feel warm and inviting but it's very organized and there's a lot of furniture in this room but it is still very organized and comfortable i think well when i start a room i think you know you look at the space it's kind of a long um area not that wide so again starting with the rug i think again anchors it so you feel like everything is just not floating and around in the room and just you know just sitting here and there so that starts it for me as the rug anchoring it. And then, like I was saying, you just, I drew out the space. I knew I wanted to divide it into two spaces. I, you know, you can't really put a sofa right in front of the window. I hate sofas shoved against a wall. So I like all the fl furniture floating in a room. So again, scaling pieces to fit, you know, um, these are smaller. I mean, it, the room is not that small really. And the chairs are not that small. But again, scaling it to fit in the space and then having consistent, like these are a pair of, of these small square plaster tables, which are really cool. You know, I, I haven't mentioned this, but pairs is another big idea for me. Pairs of everything, everything in pairs, because again, it adds symmetry, it makes it less confusing, you know, it, it makes it a stronger statement. So pairs of lamps, pairs of urns, pairs of bookcases, pairs of ch sofas, pairs of tables. I mean, again, all those are like designer tricks that, every, that they, everyone uses to create a symmetry and, and define a space. You know, the way you bring texture to white and bring textures to room is, again, what I've been saying is, you know, again, by, by having lay, the layer of the seagrass, you know, it brings an instant warmth to it, an intro, instant naturalness, you know, an earthiness of the fiber. And then using, playing on that with wicker trays, with leather pillows, all in the same kind of camel, you know, natural wheat kind of color, the wicker, more casual bookcases. Um, again, texture of pillows and, and everything. The shades are up right now, but, you know, and then there is a little bit more formal part to it. The, the mirror over here is an antique piece. It's very dramatic, you know? So again, it's about mixing high and low, you know, more dramatic drama with more simple things. So, you know, it's a tricky balance, but that's how you do it. I mean, that's how you make it happen is by, mixing highs and lows and collecting things you love and working them together. You know, color is probably the biggest, the biggest key to decorating is once you land on a color or a palette you like 
and sticking to it and just making it reinforcing and it's stronger and stronger and all shades to me all shades go together you know all, all shades of blue blues and greens warm blues purpley blues i mean it's just you know it all sits together so here it's all shades of white all shades of wheat and you know grays and you know everything you know if you think about like sand or nature nature is a huge inspiration you know it really you know people think there's only color like only colors are like red and blue and yellow and, you know these are all colors i mean you know what i mean it's and the colors of nature like the sand all, all green as sand it's like you know 10 different colors i mean and that's how you have to just like be loose and think of it that way that they really do all sit together you know and once you get them in there you realize wow it's so beautiful just to, to mix things a couple of things i love in the bookcases here are these there's a pair because like i was talking about earlier a pair of these urns that we bought in England that we've had for many, many years, which I love. They're very kind of fragile now, but um, I love them. Um, actually, over here, this is a something product that was developed for William Sinema Home. These two little Chinese figurines, which I've loved and were surprised they haven't been broken ever. So I'm happy they're still together for us to enjoy. Um, here's another Higo Guinness little drawing of a dachshund that we've had for a long time. People have such a hard time, you know, starting their house and what should they do? And like even, you know, they make everything such a big, you know, everything's such a big deal. I think sometimes it's like buying a pillow or buying a throw or buying a, you know, a photograph. I think you just have to start with what, this is what I always say. You have to start with what you love. Like, do you like, you know, like what, maybe what colors you love? Do you like pictures of animals do you like pictures of the desert do you like do you want it to be you know super cozy but just starting and then just building on layers and people i think worry about too much where it's going to go on their house they have to have a spot it's like no it's not about that it's like just start getting putting things in your house that you love and building a story about about how you feel about the world and about how you want to live and is it really clean and pure and simple and organized? Is it more cluttered? Is it more layered? Is it more funky? Are there a lot of prints? I mean, whatever you want, but you just start because you get such joy out of it. I do anyway of, you know, of having things around that make you feel good and you remember where you, where it came from and what you were doing then and when, when you bought it or, you know, how you found it or, you know, and I love mixing old things with new things, you know, and expensive things with inexpensive things and just funky things that you really love and it's like it's all about you know again mixing things and just being comfortable and making it happen and making your house a home and you know layering things i also really believe in using you know if you have beautiful china or beautiful dishes that you should use them if you have beautiful napkins you should use them i mean it's not about putting it away in a cupboard and you know you can do that but also still use everything you know it just makes it i love things that are practical but are luxurious, but also have a function. You know, that's why I like, like vases that you can actually put flowers in or bowls you can put things in and just, you know, not just such decorative things that you just look at, but also beautiful things that are functional too. So let's walk on over to the dining area. You know, what I, I love about this floor up here is that it is so open, that there's no high walls blocking the view, that it's these low, walls around the staircase and then you can just walk in and see you know out to the ocean and then also our seating area for dining and the kitchen and there's another small area here which is more of like a little family room where we watch tv and hang out after dinner so looking at the dining room you know i love i love collecting things as i've mentioned um these hurricanes are from john roselli in new york um who's in a famous antique dealer and has beautiful product. Um, I love them. They're this amber glass, again, keeping on this whole vibe and feeling of warm neutrals of golds and ochres and wheat colors and leather, saddle leather. And so these really, I think, you know, when the light hits them, they glow. They provide this beautiful amber light. The dining chairs with the, with the table are from Hollywood at Home, our friend Peter Dunham. And I think this kind of is everything in one chair for the house. It's leather, so you have this great texture. They have nail heads. It's this whitewashed wood, bleached wood. And then the, the raffia back. Again, that texture, that natural texture. So, so it kind of combines every element that I love and that we were using in this house. The bar card here is just a fun little piece. I love the black. So again, it's mixing neutrals. 
a little simple casual bar cart with some William Yoward, again, the same amber, you, if you get the amber as an idea, of glasses and just different uh, wicker pieces, just super cash, but you know, but well done, I think. This is a bookcase, it was from British Khaki, which is an old furniture brand that we've loved, and I actually painted it um, to match the walls of our previous home. It's, this is an old white, it's called Old White from Pharaoh and Ball. Um, we, I had the painter paint the bookcase to match the wall, but it, it works well in this house. And this is all Ostier from, from France that I've collected for a long time of terrines and bowls and vases and all the pieces. Again, I love it's like it becomes like an art installation when it's all these pieces and you just look at the shapes. They're all the same, you know, tones of white, shades of white. And it just, I love how that looks against all creamy and white and, and beautiful. Again, pairs of things. You know, a lot of these are all like what I say call onesies, you know, just like one, one item on their own. But again, pairs, we have pairs of these little cups, which are really, really sweet. We have pairs of, these are actually very cool. These are not Ostia, but they're old uh, oil and vinegar, which are very cool. I love their French. Um, so I love all the pairs, sets of mugs. You know, they're more like, you know, they're like sculptures. Well, we love to entertain very simply. You know, I grill out on the deck. We have our grill. Um, we'll do something very simple, you know, steaks or, you know, Dave will roast a chicken. We, you know, we love Zuni chicken. He's tried to recreate Zuni chicken from our favorite restaurant up in Northern California. Um, but pretty simple food, you know? I mean, nothing, it's just all about getting together and being with, with friends and family. So let's walk over into the kitchen area and check it out. This is our island that we love. It's very large, and I love the leathered, um, honed, I think it's granite um, countertop with the painted base, the contrasting colors, another seating area for us. Um, the stool version, basically, of the chair we have in the dining area. Um, this is, you can sit here and enjoy the view while we're cooking and having drinks here as we're hanging out. You know, this, it's not that big of a kitchen, but it, I mean, it's plenty big enough for two of us. I love the home marble counters. Again, it's all about the view. You know, if you check it out, I mean, you can see, you know, all out into the Pacific Ocean. We have shades that come down. I put them all up for today. So when the sun gets too bright, we have powered shades that move, bring down this whole, the whole level up here has shades that come down to protect us from the sun. Um, I love the glass front, the frosted glass cabinets. Um, it's very modern, um, it's very, you know, but it's very comfortable, you know, and it's very easy to work in and it's very well designed. Like the rest of the house, uh, I love to collect things. And again, this is very edited version of all the things we own. And it's kind of sticking to this palette of black and white and cream and wheat color. So we have a lot of transferware pieces, you know, a lot of dishes that we've collected through the years, antique pieces. Again, it all unified, I think, by using the same palette of the rest of the floor up here. We have lots of teapots. <laughs> we have lots of, uh, this is Genori. These are all uh, Burley, which is an old English brand of transfer wear. These are both Burley. Um, Genori, um, different, again, this is Genori, which I love this whole collection of all the black and white. It's really pretty. These are Jaliska, actually, which is my favorite, favorite brand. So we actually sell in our store. Um, I love these cups. And again, different pieces, bamboo mixed in. This is Jaliska also. Um, again, it just, you know, the mix of different sizes and shapes and textures is, that's what it's all about to me. More rugs. What I think this does, again, we had this, I did a black border in here just because I thought it would be a nice little change and then layering um, indoor outdoor rugs these are dash and albert which work really well in kitchens i think because you, you can clean them they're washable they hold up much better so this is an indoor outdoor dash and albert rug i think that's it for the kitchen let's take a look into the little seating area where again we have a lot of furniture um but i think we've again organized it that it makes sense and it's livable we have this kind of more open space, again, another collection, and this is where people start to think we have a lot of, there's a lot of stuff, but again, I, it's things I've loved and collected. Again, it's another whole set of pitchers and bowls and vases, more casual. 
So a little statement there. Another small seating area with this unusual fiberglass painted faux base, stone base, um, with more elegant chairs. Um, these are actually marked from Mark Sykes' collection um, of furniture, which we did in leather, um, upholstered in leather. Um, again, a more rustic piece. We had this up in Napa in California, Santa Elena, California, mixed with more modern lighting. Um, this really cool, again, texture, fit, making, picking furniture that fits in spaces. The round really helps, you know, makes it easy to get around, to move around. It, um, no sharp corners. I love, I love round tables. And then slip covered furniture in this grayish linen. We did the, these are actually James Purse sofas and chairs that we had recovered, not recovered, but just slip covered. Actually, there's the old cover. It was a little lighter. I did more of a gray. Um, and then lots of pillows, but you know, very tonal, very, as to me, very simple. Um, and it just makes a very inviting space to hang out in. We did bring color in through the art and a lot of paintings. So I love how these all sit together. They all kind of have this goldish frames. There's, you know, so there is something tying them together and they're more, you know, more, I love the boats, this guy at the beach. This guy I think is really great. I just love the colors of him. And then a more modern abstract piece. Again, art brings so much life to a room and changes everything. And, and if you're looking for soul and feeling and yeah. art is it. Tons of pillows. I had them all made to fit, you know, all made to, for this area. But you're gonna, it's not like a stuffy, like, you know, karate chop perfect, you know, can't touch it. I mean, I do sit on them. I hang out in them. It's, you just put them back. It's no big deal. I love, I love the comfort they bring and I love you know, the casualness of it. We found this in Palm Springs, actually. It's kind of modern, African-looking piece. I never put candles in it, but I just think it's more like a sculpture. It's art in all its forms, sculpture, painting, uh, ceramics, you know, just textures. So yeah, we have lots of sculpture and different pieces of art, which I love. This is very simple, just this little bust of a man. Here's a more classical piece over here, um, mixed with you know different ceramic pieces. Again, this is where I talk about buying things you love and finding a home for them. This is um, from Marion McAvoy. Actually, does this work? Corkalage, I think she calls it. So it's actually made out of corks. Mary McAvoy. Marion McAvoy was an editor, one of the first long-term editors for El Decor. Really cool lady, you know, she's, much, she's become more of an artist now. But this is a piece we bought back east and I think it's just amazing what she did. What I love most about this home is um, the light. Uh, we're up on the top floor now, which is, you know, it's kind of an unusual layout. The kitchen is on the top floor and the main bedroom's in the middle floor. And I think that was very smart of the architects to put this all up here so you have the, the view. When you're in the kitchen, you'll see as you look out the window and the over the kitchen sink, you can see the ocean for miles, you know, so I love the layout of it. I love that the, the main bedroom is more cozy and, you know, you can still hear the sound of the ocean. Just the light and the windows and, you know, how strong it is architecturally. It's like, I don't want to say it's almost, it's almost like a commercial building kind of, you know, it's like concrete and steel and, and I love how masculine it is. Like, it's just like really, you know, it's, it's not a, a wimpy house. It's like a very strong house. We have, yes, through the years we've cut, you know, we have a lot, I love a lot of paintings. I love oil on canvas paintings. I love photography. Um, I love decorative objects. I mean, you're going to probably say you love everything. I kind of do love everything, but, but not everything really, but I do love a lot of stuff. But yeah, as we, again, as we walk through, you can see it's pretty edited now for the shop. We've actually, t we've had a lot of things in storage for years and we're bringing everything out that we've had for the store and we have a lot of art in the store and actually we've been selling a lot of art because I think people again are looking for things that mean something and have a soul and have a history and have a feeling to them and I think they're hard to find if you just buy you know ready-made prints of things that are sold by the thousands it's not quite the same it's still I think a great thing to do and a great way to start and to, write, to add color or personality to your home 
But you know, people love old things and love things that have a, a character to them. So I'm excited now to show you upstairs. We have this amazing 360 view of, from the roof of our house. So here we are upstairs, I mean on the rooftop actually of our house. Um, this is one of the things we really loved about the home, having this space up here. Um, right now it's winter, so we're not quite as decked out as we would be. We normally have our umbrella going and a whole lifestyle happening up here. But it's amazing views. You can check out the surf, see what's happening with the waves. Um, you can see all the way you know, around the whole coastline. It's just really incredible and inspiring to be out here. The glass railings were here. Um, he did a really nice job with this. You know, they're great because they protect the wind, but you don't lose the view. So you can still be sitting, you know, and your view isn't blocked, which is a great, great design. In La Jolla, um, the sunsets are a, are a big deal. People come from all over, they park on the street, they run down the, to the coast to watch the sunset. So from here, it's like this pretty epic view of the sunsets, which are amazing in La Jolla and so beautiful. So it's really about the, the evening and the sunsets. I want it to, to more of a loungy, you know, hang out, like come up here and party like you were saying and, you know, kick back. But, you know, during the winter, it's been raining a lot. So it kind of just right now, it's kind of been not happening. But I want it to be a more loungy, entertaining, comfortable vibe up here to enjoy the view. Home to me is, you know, wherever you are. I always say to Dave, you know, no matter what we, where we were, or, you know, what our careers were, or how much money we had or didn't have, and when we started, you know, we've been together 40 years, you know, it, you can always make it a home. You know, just, you have a, a table and a chair and a, you know, a vase of flowers and a, played and I mean it just again it's very simple you know it's just about putting those things together to make it comfortable for yourself and you know to make a place to live in I mean it's just you know and it's all really about you but your family and your friends and you know pets and that's what makes a home I think hello homeworthy I'm Gary and I'm Bill welcome to our home on Nantucket come on in This is Gary McBurney. Welcome to our home in Nantucket, which we have named The Cottage. And uh, we are a little island out to sea. I don't think you were supposed to do that <laughs> Hi, I'm Gary McBurney. Uh, welcome to our home on Nantucket, which we have named The Cottage. Hi, I'm Bill Richards. Nantucket's a small, quaint island 30 miles off the coast of Massachusetts in some place that we're lucky enough to call home. This house is approximately 4,000 square feet. There are uh, four bedrooms, one on the main floor, two on the level, and the master or the primary is up in the crow's nest, which we like to call it, which affords great views. This house didn't start off as a, a residence. It was a um, basically a boat shed or boat house. It's up, for, it's up from the beach, so it's I, probably more of a boat shed which is why it's tall um, and has the uh, sort of cupola space on top. The, um, the boats would, you know, come in and fill up the space um, vertically. And when we saw the, when we found the house, it was, had been um, changed into a, a guest house back in like 2000 and uh, it was very rustic. And um, we set off to, you know, make it our home. It was very much like a, a mountain cabin, which felt very much out of place, especially, you know, New England, you know, coastal situation. Well, but, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't I, I, when we first saw the house, I was definitely not attracted to this 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 property. It was uh, it was pretty bleak, and um, it, it, like Bill said, it looked like a mountain a mountain lodge. Um, I could not see myself in it. I like light 
you know, bright spaces because it had originally been a boat shed or a boathouse. There were very few windows, um, which we had to add. Um, so I, it was not love at first sight for me. Bill, on the other he hand. He saw problems, uh, I saw possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of white paint. Yeah, lots of white paint. And uh, addition of lots of windows. Welcome to our covered porch, which also serves as our entry for friends and family. Covered porches play a big part in most of the homes that we do, as covered porches on Nantucket serve as another room, uh, extension of the living room, the kitchen, whatever it might be. In this case, let me show you what we have here. We actually have a living room and a dining room um, that we've developed. Um, we wanted to carry sort of a, a casual, almost 1930s, 1940s feel in here, so we use this bamboo and rattan furniture. Uh, the furniture is covered with a uh, perennials rough and rowdy fabric in a wonderful blue. And to complement that blue, used our uh, own Gary McBurney home fabric for the pillows. The uh, red poppy fabric and the what we call the Shakamo stripe. You'll notice the lamps on the end tables, which are kind of fun. They're vintage um, oyster shell lamps. They're handmade by a um, woman somewhere like in the mid-Atlantic. Uh, we bought them a number of years ago, and you know, despite the fact that the outdoor, that the shades are not outdoor shades, uh, we make them work. You know, once or twice a year, we spray them with bathroom cleaner, and believe it or not, that does the trick. The blue theme, um, really, it's an extension of uh, what we did on the inside. If you'll notice, the blue and red, it's very similar to the blue and reds that we used in the living room. So it really does keep the uh, porch feeling like an extension rather than a separate building or whatever it might be. So the table, um, the table is set with um, pieces of dinnerware that uh, we purchased at, during COVID at auction. Uh, COVID was a time when the house was being built and because we were actually staying at it in the garage apartment at an adjacent property, we had a lot of time on our hands. So my fingers were very nimble and I bid on a lot of things that are now stored in the cabinets and on the table here. The um, these little glasses here, it's made by a company called Atlas. Uh, very collectible, you know, sort of a 1930s sort of wonderful blue glass with sailboats. We have some tarlow glasses with little sailors on them, which are kind of fun. The anchor plates are from a company called Coscada, and the owner of the company has Nantucket roots, and she's always been very generous in uh, donating auctions to our silent auction for Nantucket by design. The silverware on the table was found in Ilse La Sorga, the street market. Uh, it's old restaurant silverware and you know, they all have different markings on them. The glasses, you know, another Massachusetts or uh, New England company, Simon Pierce, favorite of ours. The dinnerware, we have a collection of Spode here. Uh, we have a Fitzhugh and then we have a uh, blue clipper that work nicely together. We like to, we like to mix and match dinnerware. Uh, we have a large collection of napkins and napkin rings when uh, guests come to our home and um, you know, they want an experience. So Gary and I happily indulge them uh, with different things that come from our inventory. Well, that's when both of us love gardens and um, you know, surrounding the, uh, the structure, we have a lot of Russian sage, uh, which is really nice. People often mistake it for lavender, but a different kind of flower. And especially at this time of year, it has a lot of height and a lot of movement. And one of the things we did install, which is, makes this room very versatile, is we do have heaters. They're uh, done in a white, they're a, it's a white uh, sort of fabrication, so they don't really stand out. But they do take the chill off, especially at the beginning of the season and the end of the season. Uh, really extends the use of the room. We've also, uh, we're fortunate enough with the gardens that we do have, is that rather than um, head to the farm or wherever we might go for flowers at other times of year, we can pretty much go out into the yard and you know, just with a pair of scissors and create little bouquets like this. Or we have a larger bouquet over here of hydrangeas. Um, this, this was a very long season for hydrangea. We did plant different varieties, which you know, they, they bloom at different times. But even at you know, the end of summer here, we still have a lovely bouquet. Now I'd like to introduce you to the interior of the home. So if you'd follow me in. Welcome to our great room. This room is actually a combination living room, dining room. It's right off the main entry, a very welcoming space when you first come into the house. When we first looked at this house, it looked nothing like this room that you're seeing right here. Um, the beams were actually, everything in here was like orange wood, 
but the, the two support beams were, had a second pair behind them, but they weren't actually beams. They were actually stripped trees with the root splay actually cut into the floor. So with the wood floor, the wood ceiling, the trees, it very much felt like it was a set, a set from The Hobbit. It, it was a little, little bit on the eccentric side. Further, uh, the fireplace uh, here was all in stone, which made for a very heavy look. Again, it, it took the look of a mountain house, uh, very out of place in this beautiful seaside location. The front part of the room was actually a kitchen as well as a dining room. Uh, we set, after we played with the house, we actually moved the kitchen into a, one of the wing, two wings on the house. But the kitchen originally, we had one half on one wall, one half on the other wall. And the thing that was really odd was the sink was on this wall, but the stove was over there. And the span of the room, as you can see, is quite large. So in the event there was any sort of fire or mishap or whatever, you know, the distance was ridiculous. So one of the first things we did do was we took away the, the trees that had been here. We replaced the two in the front with actual beams. The other two proved to be decorative and not of a supportive nature, so that was great. It created more room and what we used as the living space. Took the sofa a bit more away from the fireplace, which was great. We closed up the entry to the bedroom, which had been there. It sort of mirrored the one on this side and opened up the kitchen, which is over, on, over there. When designing a great room such as this, one of the challenges is how to effectively use the space. It's very easy to sort of put your furniture almost more on the perimeter of the room, and then the room just feels overly large, and you're not really making the best use of the space. In the case of this room, we wanted a distinct dining room and a separate living room. So we did that in two ways. The columns obviously provided a natural division, but then to reinforce that, we have a carpet here, as well as another carpet in that room. And then further separating, we have a console. So today it pretty much looks as a console, but if we were having a dinner party, this very often serves as more of a buffet or a serving table. The light fixtures also help reinforce the distinction as well. Clearly this very large brass chandelier says that this part of the room is a dining room, and the lantern you know, by the fireplace you know, just identifies that as a separate living space as well. I started out in the industry, um, well, to go, to go in the Wayback Machine, when I went to school, I, I, I started painting, and um, I thought I was going to become a, you know, an artist, which, you know, after then studying art history after that, I realized I was never going to be a great painter. So I went on to design He's school. Painter. He's a good painter. Though. I'm a decent painter, but I'm not, you know, I wasn't going to make a living at it. And I studied art history, graduated from that, with, you know, and um, decided, you know, now what do I do? I'm not, I don't really want to work in a museum, and I, I'm not going to, you know, or a gallery. Um, so I decided, well, to give, you know, to start doing interior design. Went back to school, worked for a designer in Boston for uh, 11 years, Richard Fitzgerald, and then started my own company in 1993. My path did not start with interior design. I spent about 30 years um, in the world of commercial insurance and risk management, focusing primarily on high tech and life sciences companies, which Massachusetts was a great place for that at the time. Um, Which means I, my company now has the most incredible insurance. <laughs> so, <laughs> may or may not be true, but... <laughs> Decorating our own spaces is a funny thing. I am... A, most, a lot of designers love decorating their own houses. I hate decorating my own house. Um, it's just it's just too much pressure on me to to, to make a decision it's because like the equivalent of writer's block. It's like writer's block. I had there are so many so many choices out there. I can do that for clients. I cannot do it for myself. Um, it's very difficult. So Bill usually I'm the boss in the office. Bill's the boss at home, and uh, he's not the boss of me. <laughs> he's never going to be the boss of me either. So anyway, but I I give him total reign to, to have his own opinion and and come up with ideas. I, I I actually he becomes like a client, and I I present schemes to him and um and my generally say you can do better than this I've yeah seen, yeah that. that's usually what he says at the beginning um so it, it takes us a little while to get there but he um he, he beca becomes the client and i'm his, his designer and that's generally um how it works we started i think with this piece of furniture i think this was the first piece we bought for the house it's an italian uh desk that um we, we bought it at Casa Gusto in um, West Palm Beach. Um, it, it's a, we, we store candles and linens and things like that, and it. it's also a good, a good casual bar. I work here um, on my iPad 
um, you know, and Zoom meetings, and you know, it's also very easy to mix a martini at the same time. These chairs, we also got a Casa Gusto, and uh, they're George II chairs. Um, we went into the shop. They were, you know, they weren't inexpensive. We we saw them. We we just, it's like if we don't buy these now, it's no time to think because somebody else is going to want them. And the funny thing is, is um, I think three of our friends had seen the chairs also and were really annoyed with us when we had got them instead of them. Tables, a new table. We wanted, you know, I I don't always love tables that that um, expand, so I wanted one big table. Uh, we we can serve, you know, we can have ten people at this table. Um, you know, we can bring in ball cha ballroom chairs and have, you know, 14, 16. Um, so it's, it's very, uh, very practical. I liked, I like it in white to contrast to the brown furniture. I'm still a brown furniture fan, which I know is, you know, hasn't been in fashion um, for years, but I, I kind of like the mix of things. I like antiques um, and I like the way new things look with them. Um, this cabinet um, is, a, is a German cabinet that we, we bought, we, co you know, we collect, Everything blue and white is is good for me. So um, this is um, this is our latest collection. This is one of Bill's things that he uh, he bought on auction during uh, during COVID. You know, it's it, we have a mix of things. It's English, it's Chinese, it's uh, some Japanese in here. I think too. I love you know I love anything like kind of transferware like this. Uh, the you know, the um, the Coldport uh, lions or. A favorite of mine. I love the mottled sort of uh, lapis feeling snuff bottles. Snuff bottles are uh, little bottles that would hold snuff back in the 17th, 18th century into the 19th. Um, I like anything basket, any kind of porcelain basket I love. Um, this one's a, a favorite. Where Bill and I are big fans of anything made in Nantucket, um, the big industry here forever is uh, making of um, baskets. Um, Nantucket Lightship Baskets, uh, big fans of those. There used to be a separate um, basket museum here in Nantucket, but that, that's been absorbed into the um, Historical Association, which has an amazing collection. Um, so baskets are good. We love um, Sailor Valentines, which the story used to be that the, the sailors made them for their loved ones while they were on the boats, which sounds great, but they they usually were made in the islands somewhere in Polynesia or something like that. and um, and brought here, brought brought home for them. Um, Bill has never met a box he didn't like. He loves boxes. Uh, ship model from a friend gave me his birthday gift probably 25 years ago, our good friend Judy um, Flynn, who uh, love it still, all these years later. Um, big, big thing here also is um, purses made out of Nantucket baskets for, um, for women. Um, carry them around at cocktail parties. It's a nice one we get at auction. I you know, just like the form. I love the, the little whale on top. Um, so uh, that that's, you know, I, I don't go to cocktail parties with it, but I do uh, like to display it. The cabinets are great storage. Be, one of the big challenges for this house, which probably for me was the biggest challenge, is because it was a boat shed, there were no closets. I mean, this wasn't designed as a home, so there's no place to store anything. Um, it's it's been a challenge here. So part of these, the bookcases, which, you know, which, which have our Nantucket uh, books and our Deckard Arts books, which we, we love. Um, but, you know, we are collectors. And, um, you know, you want a flag glass? This flag glass. How about one with, um, and as Bill mentioned earlier, you know, sailors. So we have all kinds of, um, goodies in here that we get along the way. This cabinet has more, you know, more plates and glassware and yeah, but they're good. They're great storage. They're all around the room. Um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I, you know, we, we kind of like a mix of things. Um, this is a Maison Jansen um, coffee table, which I love. Um, I like, you know, that, that sort of 1960s feeling in the room. Um, the, the, uh, the sofas are very streamlined and, and clean looking. Um, Dioramas are a big, a big thing for us to collect. We love um, the feeling of, of those. Um, very whimsical. Again, more books. We actually do read them. And uh, one of my happiest things is to come down from my bedroom in the morning and find guests all sitting around the room reading our books. That makes us feel really good. The um, 
the ship painting gouache is by an art, a French artist, um, or Philippe Conrad. Uh, I've been collecting him for about close to 30 years and bought them or originally in, in Paris, the flea market. And this one had been at Ralph Lauren on Newbury Street in Boston. And um, it came up for auction um, a few years ago and uh, I grabbed it. So I'm very happy to have it. Spy glasses, you know, sailor spy glasses, ahoy, um, are great. We got together sometime around uh, in the early 2000s and uh, our careers were very uh, different. And we spent a lot of time away from each other. And at a certain point, we decided that if we were going to continue on in our relationship, something had to change in the dynamic. So because his name was on the door, it was much easier for me to change careers. And I always believed in a second career. So this was a wonderful impetus to make that happen. Uh, when it first started, you know, we decided to do a book. And the book became my training ground because we took a number of projects that he had done, and my job was to write a story for every project, and then every picture needed a caption. So it was constantly, why, why, why? Um, and we were, during Hurricane Sandy, we were holed up in a hotel um, in lower Manhattan. Uh, with There was very little food around, um, so I think we had a bottle of vodka and some instant oatmeal to and, survive And a few, a few bottles of red wine. And with my foot basically on his chest asking why and plying him with vodka, we wrote the book. <laughs> it's provided me a great design background and a great way to get into his head and figure out you know, how and why our projects happen the way they do. We actually, we met at a, um, at a friend's birthday party uh, 22 years ago now, um, his 50th birthday party. We, you know, it was like one of those crazy evenings when you meet somebody and you know, it's like you spend the rest of the night talking to one another and you know it's like okay he's in my head now um and uh it, it was it was it's been a good journey but, but bill actually had we had connections from um years before that probably 10 or, or more years before that because bill almost 20. It, almost 20 years ago he actually did back to insurance he had done the insurance on our house outside of boston my house outside of boston um which i had connected. Met, I hadn't connected the dots, and we uh, we had never met. So uh, we're sounding a little best in show. We are sounding a little <laughs> best in show, which is scary. The two of us both set foot on the island, uh, you know, over thirty years ago, and I think we both felt the same way. We just fell in love with the place. Um, it's a sandbar mm -hmm. island, so the topography is rather flat. It's not uh, like some of the other islands, more of a rock-based island. We have you know change or whatever. Very flat island. Um, Dune grasses, blue skies, sand, sand in, under your feet, um, rich in history. Uh, everybody knows about the whaling history, but it goes way beyond that. There was an actor's colony here in the 20s. There was um, attempts at farming. Uh, there's a, a very strong female history here because when the men were off at sea, the women basically ran the shops and did all that kind of stuff. Um, Really, just it, it's all I find it enchanting. And there's am amazing architecture. Um, you know, this was Nantucket was one of the wealthiest towns in the country up until the 18 what 60s. Yeah. Um, so the architecture is quite beautiful. Beautiful colonial architecture, Federalist architecture, Victorian um, cobblestone streets, lamp lights or, or gas lights. Um, it's it's that's what I fell in love with when I first came here, and also it's a um, a gardener's paradise. The uh, the air here and the sunlight and is just perfect for gardening. Well, which, it's a gardener's paradise if you don't account for all the deer. Well, the deer, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our house which spends is a three quarters challenge. of the year with deer fencing around it yeah. to protect it for the summer. Uh, now let me show you our main guest room. Funny thing about this room is that uh, it's a collection of a lot of things that we've had in many of our houses over the years. Uh, the John Robeshaw fabric, which we love, I like that, the, the sort of Indian hand-blocked feel of it, um, has been with us for, um, I think, three or four houses. Um, the headboard was in our, the bed was in our last house, the, the, the quilt I've had for probably 25 years. Um, the nightstands were in our first apartment in New York, so it's, you know, the. the Chairs in the room, side chairs, are where my mother's cottage and my, our last house. So it's a real mixture of, of, of things. Um, I, I like the, um, I, I love this Laurel Piano sisal carpet. It's a, it just has a nice, crunchy, good feel to me. Um, the paintings are an Italian artist who um, 
we, we had in our last house. Um, they seemed really big in that house. The ceilings were very low. It was a very mid-century house here in the island, one of the few. And um, they, they fit perfectly here. They have a little more height, which is good. Oh, and um, funny, funny enough is that the designer's home is never done. We are uh, still missing a large mirror over our, uh, our, our chest of drawers that uh, someday we will, we will find. Also, um, these, um, another favorite of mine are these marbles, which I've been collecting since I was a little kid. These are actually my marbles from when I was probably 10 years old. That a couple of extra ones have been tossed in over the year. I put in this little picket fence basket. Of course, you have to have a whale. Uh, Christopher Spitzmiller, who we love. Interesting thing here behind the bed also is the the, the windows were it, we, we added all the windows, uh, a lot of the windows to the house, uh, a lot in this room, to add a, a, a nice bright feeling. And um, uh, you feel like you're in a garden when you're in bed. But the where the windows needed to be placed uh, was awkward with the headboard. The headboard ha hung over the, over the windows. So we put the, the curtains across the bed to kind of unite, unite the wall. And now Bill is going to show you the last room on the main level of the house, which is our kitchen. Well, you've heard us speak about how much entertaining we like to do. Well, none of that would be possible without this wonderful kitchen. As we enter it, you'll notice that the kitchen is dominated by this large blue island and then topped with a pot rack from Ann Morris. The island has a marble countertop, which people may not want to use because it's so susceptible to staining, but it's a Vermont marble that we love. Once a year, we bring someone in to clean it up and it works for us. As far as the other features of the island, we decided to add these turn legs to give it a, a bit of a nautical feel and spirit of the rest of the house. Then we employed the surfaces of a local decorative painter, Deirdre Mannix, to give it this wonderful character. She applied layers of paint and glaze to give it sort of a worn antiqued look and I just love the color. The glass knobs also add a little bit of a reflective touch uh, and also it gives it a sense of age, I think. When people talk about painting their islands, is it should they be the same color as the cabinets or a different color of the cabinets? And as a general rule, we kind of look at the size of the space. In a smaller kitchen, uh, an island painted the same color as the cabinets may work better and make, make the space feel larger. But in a space like this where it is a bit oversized, the contrasting color really uh, gives the island some personality and gives the kitchen a little personality as well. These lovely uh, sunflowers, it's hard to miss as well, are from a local farm uh, just down the street, Morzen Farm. We watched them growing in the fields and uh, yeah, it was impossible not to stop the car and just pick up a bunch and throw them in this uh, old crock that we have. Another feature I'd like to tell you about in the kitchen uh, involves this sofa. Many times in a kitchen with a window like this, you'll find that the architect or builder wants to put a window seat in. Personally, I've never met a window seat that I find very comfortable. And typically they're against a window, so your pillow and back are leaning against the window, which feels somewhat awkward. So what we decided to do was take this mid-century Danish sofa covered in this wonderful linen that we found from a shop in uh, West Palm Beach, Fustina Pace, and uh, put the sofa in the kitchen. People initially thought it was a little bit strange, but almost everybody who wanders in this kitchen at some point within the first 30 minutes is seated at that and usually with a glass of wine in their hand. So I've told you about how wonderful this kitchen is. Uh, Gary's actually the chef in the house. Uh, I do some baking, which I started primarily during COVID with the, you know, the classic sourdough starter that everyone was using at the time. And believe it or not, let me show you what I have here. I actually have some sourdough ready to bake off for tomorrow's dinner. I've kept the actual starter since you know, 2020, uh, so it's very active. So another tip with a kitchen is to place artwork on any of the various wall space that you have. In this case, we had a space aside a, a pantry closet, and we used these great photographs by a local photographer, David Halliday, all nautically themed, so it ties in with the rest of the house. Then additionally, we have a wonderful painting. It's of the uh, Life, Life Saving and Shipwreck Museum, which is actually just down the street. It's by a, a wonderful artist friend of ours named Diane Dicker. And lastly, we have a great collection of reverse glass paintings of ships that um, I can't honestly say I know the provenance. I bought them at auction, but they, you know, they look great in here. 
And again, it's just little things you can do to give your kitchen some personality. It's a room where you spend a lot of time, uh, so why not? Typical dinner party for Gary and I on the island uh, would involve fish. We have friends who will tell you that they've probably eaten swordfish here more times than they care to count, but we do serve other types of fish. Generally, we also source local produce um, for dessert. I mean, Gary typically has, you know, um, apples, berries, that sort of thing around. He makes a mean uh, fruit cobbler, uh, which you know, we're, we're lucky enough to enjoy one the other evening. Um, and then lots of wine. When I introduced you to our living, and, living room and dining room, I mentioned that the kitchen had been moved into what had been a bedroom. Now we're moving into the mudroom, which had also been part of that same initial bedroom. The mudroom was great in this house because, as Gary mentioned, having been a boathouse or utility building, there weren't a lot of, lot of closets. So this gave us an opportunity, really, to create lots of storage space. It's also a nice place when you first come in, which this is the door we use most of the time. It gives you a place to put your sunglasses, your keys, you know, all those miscellaneous things slide easily into the top drawer. We have an interesting couple of pieces of art here that I'd like to mention. Uh, the top one is by a friend of ours, an artist named Melly Cooper. Melly um, makes these incredible pieces, and it's actually made out of pressed paper. She makes a latex mold out of the actual objects that you see. Then she uh, has her own paper pulp and presses it into the mold to make the form, and then she hand paints uh, the designs on the object. Um, incredibly delicate work. The middle picture here is actually a family picture from my side, and I actually have a picture of my grandfather here in 1921, and for some reason, if he grew up in Salem, Massachusetts, they put all the boys in the photograph in sailor's hats, which is very apropos in the house. And now the weather instruments, you know, this was something I had to have. Um, we like to kayak and uh, do those sort of water activities. So I have the, gate, the guides here that will always tell me whether it's high tide, low tide, whether or not it's too windy, whatever it might be. So very, very fun to have around. Many of the things in the house have come from auction. And what I haven't mentioned to date is there's a big auction house on the island uh, called Raffaella Sona. I picked up this little curiosity piece several years ago. And if you take a close look, it's actually real estate ads from years ago. And at one point, it was a listing for a little house in Wisconsin for $8,500. So we do know this is definitely from days gone by. We covered the walls in this space with a um, beautifully colored uh, raffia wallpaper from Philip Jeffries. Um, because, we, again, we have so much white in the house, this sort of um, adds some warmth, especially to an area that um, it is more kitchen, family-oriented, that sort of thing. So we think it works rather, rather well. We do, actually, we have very similar taste. Um, and it, it translates from decoration, but down to our closets. Uh, there are many mornings we come out of the closet not having seen each other till we're dressed and we, one of us is gonna, no, you can't wear that shirt. <laughs> well, I, and just now I put on a check shirt and it turned out he had already taken out a check shirt to put on, but you know, so he had to change. Um, so we, and, and design wise too, we have very similar tastes. I think we both, you know, one of the things that I guess attracted ourselves to one another was that, um, you know, we, we like any, everything Nantucket, everything nautical, um, you know, we're both from Boston. We, we both have, we both grew up probably 10 miles from one another. Um, so there there's a lot of similarities in our life and, um, it, it's, you know, and, and, and back to the clothing thing, it, it, it can get a little scary because we have a lot of the same clothes and, uh, you know, unless we pack together when we're traveling, we could end up with a suitcase of exactly the same things. Except for shoes, I'm a, we have diff totally different taste in shoes. Now I'm going to bring you up to our crow's nest. Um, along the way, I'm going to uh, show you some artwork on the staircase. Uh, we collect uh, antique, historic things, um, contemporary local artists uh, who, who we have great fondness for, um, beautiful Sailor Valentines, so nice woolly. Um, there's, a, there's a really nice portrait of a sea captain with his uh, sextant. Um, very handsome guy. Usually they're kind of scary looking. This, this, this guy is uh, somebody you'd, you would you know, like to know. Um, another nice diorama, which uh, very sweet, sweet little one. Also, I'm a big fan of uh, flags. have a nice pair of framed uh, antique, uh, probably from the 1890s or so, flags here. Uh, love our rope handrail. I always try to incorporate one of these in our houses. Uh, just, yeah, nice, nice nautical um, kind of feeling to it. 
Uh, painting here we got in the south of France about 15 years ago. Don't know who the, the artist was, but uh, the great color. Um, before we get into our bedroom, there is a, uh, a little vestibule, uh, and we covered the walls in our, uh, our own uh, whaling flag uh, wallpaper uh, done for Gary McBurney Home. Um, it's based on actual whaling flags of uh, ships, uh, which is, uh, there's a plaque of them at the uh, Historical Association here on the island. Um, we have this old, this bamboo mannequin, which, I, you know, depending on which house it's in or what season it is, I dress differently. Great uh, Regency bullseye mirror, a nice bobbin um, bookcase uh, that, again, has that ropey kind of feeling we love. So now let's, uh, let's go on to the bedroom. Um, so in, when you first walk into our bedroom, you, I think you, you, you feel a sense of volume. Um, it's a big room. Um, high, high ceiling, you know, this is where the mast of the ship would have been, or the boat, the sailboat. Um, we, it, this again was all painted, um, or, or urethaned um, pine, so it was very orange. We painted the whole thing um, out white. There were iron rods holding it together, which uh, was simplified. Um, the, the structure of the space just feels really nice to us um, when we're in here. The, you know, the windows open out onto the, the water and the sky, nighttime, morning, it's, it's, it's glorious up here. The bed was, uh, was made to fit within this alcove sort of thing that happens with the beams. Um, you know, it tucks, tucks in uh, and the nightstands, because it tucks into it, the nightstands come forward. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a very practical kind of space and it's hard to get out of bed in the morning. Uh, chest was made by uh, Blackie Brothers in New York, custom for us, um, wonderful, um, the wonderful old, old world style, um, Parson style. Um, the um, carpet was made by Guinevere in London, uh, nice uh, hand-woven killum. We selected the colors, leontine linens uh, on the bed, uh, just, just uh, you know favorite spot of ours uh, and the beautiful beautiful ocean right at our right at our feet every morning so um, we continued the blue and white up through the hallway with the carpet and into the bedroom but in the bedroom we added we added the the red um, I'm I'm always been a red fan and um, I I had um, it basically started because I had a pair of antique red glass lamps and uh, they, I wanted them to fit within the blue and white scheme, so that's where I pulled from. Um, I'm also a big um, American flag person. I love anti old American flags, actually any flag. Um, I have my father's flag from his World War II flag um, right next to my bed. And um, great campaign desk, uh, very useful to work at, use it as a nightstand. Bob, another bobbin piece, uh, the, this one, uh, a really cool chair from uh, David Duncan in New York, and um, yeah, collect it's uh, the the collection of boats and ships continues around the room. Uh, the best part of uh, the room for me is being is is our little balcony overlooking the water. Uh, I can get up at night and go out and look at the stars. Um, it's great when I get up in the morning. I just you know open the door and you know feel the, the breeze coming through. Um, I think my, my favorite part of this house, uh, of this, this home for us, I think our bedroom is probably my, my favorite spot in the house because of its views and um, openness. Um, I'm a person that likes to sleep with blackout curtains and you know in the dark, and I've never drawn the curtains here or lowered the shades. Um, it's just wonderful to go to bed at night and have the, you know, the, be able to see the stars and wake up in the morning with the sunlight. It's, uh, Perfect. I like the bedroom too. We do spend a lot of time up there. As you'll see, it's a very large room that also functions as a quasi office as well. Yeah. But I think this particular space is my favorite. We travel a lot um, for work and we're uh, you know, alone and together quite a bit. And this is definitely communal space. So when we're actually here, we do entertain quite a bit, um, whether it's summertime or wintertime. In wintertime, uh, there's an event here called Christmas Stroll. We'll invite friends in, we'll have dinner at the ta dining table right over this way, and then we'll gather around here. And uh, in honor of my sister, we do this reading of the, uh, the Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And it started out after she passed away. It started as something very sort of somber, and it's become very theatrical. And we have a bunch of friends who are really characters and frustrated actors, 
and everybody just it all plays out right here in front of the fireplace and we wear hats and you know all, all the goofy stuff that everyone wears a christmas stroll lights around our necks and you know it's 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 fun it's just this room has a lot of fun memories on nantucket one of the advantages of a twin guest room is that it provides flexible sleeping arrangements for the many house guests you're sure to have now i'd like to show you our outdoor patio so we were just in the hydrangea guest room uh, which I mentioned is one of two guest rooms on the lower level. One of the problems with lower level bedrooms is people always feel like this, they're sleeping in the cellar and you get a little pushback about you know, somebody not wanting this or that room. When we designed this house, this space was not here. So the initial thought was we would put a window in each, be each bedroom, which meant we would either have a window well or we would dig out a bit um, and just create a little bit of space between the house and, and an outside retaining wall. Well, it turned out that the cost to bump that retaining wall out six feet wasn't much more than if we bumped it out there what, for what you see right now. Um, what that did was it provided us an opportunity to put French doors out of both bedrooms and it opens onto this really spacious little patio that guests can use for working, making phone calls, you know, just relaxing. Uh, we decided to create the illusion of more space by employing mirror. We did two mirrored panels that are placed directly opposite the French doors and then as a decorative element, we incorporated this trellis work. And then um, to, to create a little bit of a green space, we put in this climbing hydrangea climbing up the walls. And this year we have geraniums here. One of the um, little pitfalls we had was with the mirror, uh, it reflects when the sun is at a certain angle, it reflects directly on the plant. And originally there had been ivy there and the ivy burned. <laughs> so um, we had a photo shoot here at some point and we just had some geraniums, so we just stuck them into the ground and success. So I think we'll be seeing geraniums here for years to come. The space is currently set up into two distinct areas. This end has a sofa with a coffee table, and the end, this end down here uh, has a small dining table. Uh, the inside living room uh, has a little bar attached to it, which we've set up with a little refrigerator and a coffee machine. So guests who are staying on the lower level can get their cup of coffee in the morning, just come out here, enjoy the morning, catch up on emails and so forth. So this spiral staircase not only provides you know, access in the event of an emergency, but it also provides a very beautiful way to access the garden. So when planting this garden, we had to be very um, aware of the fact that we are in a more remote part of the island where there are more deer and rabbits. Um, those animals can destroy your garden very quickly. And consequently, despite the fact that we've planted as many deer resistant species as possible, we do find that we have deer fencing up for about three quarters of the year. Um, and while you, know, you don't always want to look at deer fence, the value in that is during the summer months, we do have some beautiful hydrangeas blooming and some other flowering plants that we might not otherwise be able to have because they would have been eaten. So now I'd like to take you around to the front of the house. As we approach the front of the house, you'll notice that the garden design becomes a bit more formal. Despite the fact that we are in a casual area, there is a bit, a degree of formality to our lifestyle. So we put in a proper entry gate and then we put a bluestone patio in, which is a great place for cocktails. In the summertime, we're known for putting a tent in this area of the yard and there's typically a cocktail party right in the bluestone patio. Um, a perfect place to spend a summer evening. So let me take you to the bluestone patio and show you one of the water features that we have. Before we get though, I will point out that uh, we've always been enamored with the rose covered, rose covered cottages in Sconset. And despite the fact that we do have deer here, the deer fencing has allowed us to at least attempt to have some roses growing over the, over the house. So the bluestone patio area that we wanted, um, as you can see, is rather large. And if it was unbroken, it would start to look like a landing strip. So we decided to incorporate a water feature using an old bowl that Gary had bought in Paris about 30 years ago. Frankly, for 25 of those 30 years, it sat in a storage bin. Uh, so it was a nice opportunity to use that. Um, the water flows into a um, sort of a rec recycling pit um, and the plantings around it um, have been a little problematic. The wind, for as much as it looks like the water flow is rather gentle, the wind tends to blow the water in this direction. So the choice of lavender as a surround was, has been sort of a difficult one. On windy days such as today, you'll find that the wind will blow the water often in this direction and the lavender will get wet. We have replaced the lavender in this area several times already, uh, which some people may say is foolish, but we do like lavender. 
Earlier, I showed you our friends and family entrance from the interior of the home, but I thought it'd be nice to share with you what our friends actually see when they come to our door. The, most of the plants that you can see are deer resistant species, as I mentioned. You know, we have cat mint, um, lots of cat mint. We do manage to have some hydrangeas here, different, different species, which is nice as they bloom at different times. And then circling the screen porch, we have a beautiful stand of Russian sage. For me, and you know, I was, it's funny, I was thinking about this yesterday, and when I was, when I was a little kid, I used to always say, um, you know, would use the word house, and my mother would always correct me and say, no, it's a home um, that we have. And, um, you know, I, I think about that a lot, and this house is a collection of things that we both had for many years and bought together, and it's, it's, it's where we have friends, family is always here, our parents have been here with us. Um, yeah, we have uh, you know, dinner parties on a regular basis, so we're always ready to have a, uh, you know, a, a barbecue and uh, you know, invite people in at any, in any given second. So that, that to me is home. And um, we also didn't want the, the house to be a museum. I mean, we, we're major collectors. I'm definitely, you know, I'm not a minimalist. And, you know, I, Bill may be more, more so than me, but definitely not me. And um, you know, it's all our collection of things, and, and that's important, but it's not a museum. It's definitely not a museum. We've bought and sold a lot of properties over the time we've been together, and we're constantly on the road, so I don't think my feeling of home is necessarily tied to a particular structure. I think no matter where you are, um, you can create that feeling. It's pulling in the people that you love, the people that you, you know, you have good friends. Um, it's very easy to pull a meal together somewhere and create that sort of feeling. It's you know the, the right lighting, the right music, which you know very easy to do with phones and technology these days. So I, I think it's more um, who you're with, the environment you create, wherever you are. And uh, I guess I think we've become pretty good at that. I think yeah, we're pretty we're, we're pretty um, adaptable. adaptable, and we move around pretty easily. We also tend to like um, a lot of having a lot of the same things in our homes, so that. Um, we know what we have, we know it will work. It's very familiar. Um, it's very familiar. And, um, you know, it all works really well and it's, it's, it's pretty easy as long as you have place settings of China for 24 multiple sets. Well, that, that works for me. Yeah. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Tina. Welcome to our Rockport, Maine home. Come on in. I'll show you around. I'm Tina Pine, CFO, Chief Family Officer. I live here with my husband, Joe, and we have two lovely visitors, our children, Cameron Pine, who's 22 and lives in D.C., Sam Pine, his wife Mary Summers, and his lovely daughters who are 17-year-old twins, Camille and Marguerite. But mainly the two cats live here and we work for them. Johnny, John Pine, and Sabine Pine. This house was built actually in the 80s and we bought it about 12 years ago and it was very different than what you're going to see today. It was owned by a couple who had uh, quite different tastes than we do. Uh, it was pretty gaudy. It was so fugly that nobody bought it. And when we looked at it, we realized that this was just a view with a house attached to it. And we had to make uh, enormous space for it to, so you could see they had small windows covered with curtains and the view is what you're going to love about this house. We started with seven acres. We bought the house and, and they had a guest cottage, which you'll see, which was unfinished. Uh, they had done the stonework and if you did that stonework, that would have been a million dollars in itself. Uh, the house stood on the market for, I don't know how many years because it was so gaudy. No one could see past it. So we bought this property and then we had a neighbor who had this fabulous little Frank Lloyd Wright design house. By saying design means it was built after he died, but it's his design. And it's so close to the water, you could never build anything like that again. So we bought it and turned it into a dining hall. Then my husband decided he needed a barn for the 
little tractor that he has. That got way out of hand. It's three levels and you could fit 12 Suburbans in the bottom. I mean, it's crazy. Uh, six Suburbans, not 12. Uh, you could put others in the other part and we built an apartment on top of it, which is so adorable. That was so fun to do. That was a great project and a big garden, a vegetable garden there because we, we needed that. Uh, then there was one property left uh, that was between our two properties. So when our neighbor decided to sell, she sold it to us. And now we have 23 acres and we have five houses on the property and it's become a family compound. This is a foyer. This is where people enter the house and they see my two famous Jamie's picture, Jamie Wyatt pieces that came from the Deadly Sins collection, which I absolutely love. This is what I get to wake up and see every day. I just love it. This living room was so different when we bought this house. This was all wall with a little bitty porch on the end that you, we never sat on. And it had these small windows. This was a part of the house I just could not understand people. So we blew it out, put a big porch out here, put the fireplace in, found this piece of granite, added that small window and just changed it completely. It was the ugliest room in the house and now it's my favorite. This is Colin Page. Uh, he did this piece, it's um, on Highway 17. He said that he saw this mountains of Camden and did this great piece for us. And then we have these darker pieces are by Rivington Pine, who, as you might guess, is a relative, my brother-in-law, who just passed away in November. And he did, he did some kinky kind of fun stuff that I've always loved. I got a piece every year for my birthday. These are kind of cool. These trunks I bought at Round Top in Texas, and they have a CT on them. And I asked the lady, what, what is this for? And she said, these were for Kathy Tupper. Who's Kathy Tupper? The Tupperware lady. She found a Tupperware and this is what she used to haul her stuff around in. I thought that was just so cool, I had to buy them. And these are French hinges from doors. Got these in London. Just so much fun. And this coffee table, which, oh, you couldn't possibly lift. It's big pieces of steel from Bath Ironwork. And this guy designed the bottom for it and put it together. But they're so heavy, you can't possibly move them. And then this piece is Brian White, who is a local artist who we have several pieces. This is all made with shells. And it's just so cool. And he did this with some screen. It's, <clears throat> I gave him a picture of a Dior dress. Uh, he made the waist a little bit too big for me. I'd like for it to be smaller, but... It's a lot, it's a big fun piece. I can't even count the number of pieces we have. You'll see more upstairs and in other rooms as we go through the house. This skull in here, that's my ex-husband to remind my current husband what I'm capable of. <laughs> you have to come outside just to really appreciate, but we have this long porch that you can have great cocktail parties. And I love to, I, that's my little herb garden because I cook and I love to cook, it's, it's great fun. You just go out in the garden, pick some vegetables, come up and cook them and get some fresh seafood. But this is our view. Tell me about this house over here. Ah, that's our friend Angus. Angus was sitting on this very porch one Saturday and he said, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of Alabama, it's too hot, I need a place. And I turned him around and said, that 116 acres is for sale. The bank has it and it's the deal of the century. And he bought it the next morning. So now I got Angus who I've known for 40 years and Joe and I've been friends with forever. So it's great to have him as my next door neighbor. Stucco. Yeah, you don't see that in Maine very often. A as Joe said, the people that built this house had more money than sense. They just did all kind of different things that we've been able to turn into more of a comfortable home. It had, it was bizarre when we bought it. There was a solar system that I'm sure 20 years ago was the state of the art that was in here that was built in the side and had black rocks and went up. We took all of it out. It wasn't functional anymore. And we took all of it out and just made it a, a comfortable, simpler, much simpler house. Do you sit here a lot? When I'm reading, like I just sit here and chill. I mean, just 
sit here and look at it from my view. It's just, it's just so incredible. And the breeze comes through and there's not that many bugs in Maine, you know, it's pretty good here because we're on the water and the breeze goes through so we don't have many bugs. So I just, I just sit here and pretend I'm somebody. <laughs> Tina, you are somebody. <laughs> A legend in my own mind. <laughs> Brian White did these little things too. And he did this for me for Valentine's Day one year. Isn't that cool? Who's this baby up above? That's, that's a little dead baby head. <laughs> I bought that at an antique shop. My daughter thinks it's disgusting. I think it's kind of cool. People either love it or they hate it. I like art because it, it invokes people to say that's disgusting or that's gross or, oh, that's kind of cool. I think it's cool. Little dead baby heads. They did them from dolls. They made them from dolls. I have, you'll see the garden and we have lots of flowers everywhere. And we keep the house full of flowers all the time. That's the deal. Uh, just filling them up with different things. I have garlic scapes. I, I use all kind of crazy flowers in here. It's just really fun to do that. This piece we bought at an, an auction in New Orleans. It's carved from a solid piece of wood and it's African. And we had this fabulous tree that was going by. So I kept all of the sticks from it and I've used it in several, you'll see this in several of the houses that I, I just could not let it go to waste. It's just too cool looking. But that piece is, you know, very heavy and just an interesting thing. My design sense is all about the art and all about the views. I, I think that if you just do neutral things, the furniture doesn't matter. The furniture needs to be simple because that's not what you're looking at. What you're looking at is the fun things that you find in little shops. The previous owners were really fun people. I wish I could have known them. Sparkle was her name and she married, she was a Weber fuel heir and she married a lobster fisherman's son who became a dentist who wore gold chains and rings on every hand and drove a Rolls Royce, which is very not Maine, if you know what I mean. But they had mirrors everywhere. There was dark blue marble. It was, they had an eight person tub upstairs in the bathroom that uh, you knew that there was some serious party going on. They had more money when since than they built this house. It was built, dynamited into a granite hill at 180 foot elevation overlooking the ocean. And then they built a uh, guest cottage and a croquet court, a regulation croquet court. And I would meet people and they'd say, oh yeah, I played naked croquet at your house. And I just wish I could have been around for that. So we kind of simplified everything. We turned the croquet court into a golf putting green, which you'll see. It's really pretty. And it's, it's kind of like this eternity line on the ocean or infinity line, whatever you call that on the ocean. And you'll see it later. I can't wait to show you. Maybe we'll do a few putts together. Okay, let's go to the dining room. This is the dining room. And um, when I grew up, we had a Lazy Susan in our, this is a Chihuly piece, by the way, which I love his stuff. I have, the, I have uh, others in bookshelves. But when I grew up, we had a Lazy Susan. So we had this made for this table that we bought at an auction. And we eat like this. You just roll stuff around, it's really fun but I'll tell you a little story about these chairs. We used to live on an island. My husband's family has been here more than a hundred years. And we lived on this island until I decided we really needed a driveway, but, and bought this house. But in the attic were these cool chairs. Well, my husband thought they were ugly and we needed to get rid of them. So my fancy friend who knows a lot about antiques saw them and said, these are very, very, she's English. She goes, these are very valuable chairs, darling. You must check them out. Let me call my dealer. And the dealer said, I'll give you $50,000 for them. So then we fell in love with them and here they are. Otherwise they'd have probably still be in the attic. <laughs> That's a Brian White piece here. Little dress he did for me that I just love. I have big dinner parties here, and we uh, have, as I told you, this, this Frank Lloyd Wright house that we call the dining hall. Can see, I have actually seated 40 people in there for dinner, and you'll see that soon, it's so cute. And that's a Ken Nolan, he lived here in the summers. 
He was married to Paige Rents, who was head of Architectural Digest for many years. And these are a couple more little rib pines that we have. This little nude is Roberta Getschke. She's, uh, you know, we try to use local artists. She's a local artist as well. And I found these in a, in a trunk. I also found a Louis Vuitton trunk in the garage that they had here when, when this couple, this interesting couple um, who had this house, uh, they, she passed away. There's also lots of rumors about that too, maybe. Naked croquet, maybe. Uh, anyway, she passed away and he uh, sold the house and there was just all kinds of stuff. It was so fugly, you can't even believe how fugly it was. I mean, it had a giant arrangements of fake flowers everywhere, but underneath some of that stuff were treasures, like these little pieces of coral, which I just love. This is Sabine. This is my baby. This is what my bar my daughter got me when she left for college. So I have a, a little baby and she is just a love bunny. She's my sweetheart. She is the easiest. If she didn't shed, she'd be perfect. You're perfect, baby. I became an organic gardener and we grow most of our food here. Uh, all of the vegetables and herbs. I love to grow herbs and I love to cook. So it had to be something that we could just go out to the garden, pick a tomato, pick some herbs, come up and make things. And I, I love doing that. We, I love putting things away and I put them in bags and freeze them. And when we leave for the summer, I take all of that stuff with me. It drives my husband and child crazy. But I love to use my things that I grew to cook with. It's just really fun. Welcome to the kitchen, my space. This is where I live and this is where I cook. My husband says this is a cluster. I'm not gonna use the other word he says, but this is a cluster, but I know where everything is and I really love to cook. So he's not changing it. It's staying just like it is. Okay, so this kitchen is small, but it's where I hang out and I, we bought these in Portland at an antique shop, bought all of them, and I have to put my spoons and forks and everything in them because I don't have enough space, but it's kind of cool because you always know where they are. So you see, it's my happy place. This is wine vinegar that I make. A friend of mine gave us for the 4th of July a big bottle of rosé, and my daughter and her friends promptly drank it in one night, mind you. She had a little parte down there. So I make uh, wine vinegar with it. I take a base, like you could even buy some wine vinegar, put it in the bottle. And you know, when you don't finish a bottle or a bottle happens to be bad, you can pour the remains in there. And you need to use a cork top though. And uh, you have it all year and at Christmas time or whatever, you could give it to your friends, use it for marinades, use it for sauces. It's just way fun to do. This is my garlic scapes that I let dry and we grow a lot of garlic. So these little pods are actually quite tasty. So we let them dry out and then I take them and harvest them and kind of saute them in oil and put them in the fridge in a jar and use them for garlic, which is fun. So I'm taking some of these cloves, all right? And you eat them. I'm gonna have horrible garlic breath after this, but you just eat them or you saute them and put them in a jar and use them for seasoning, like if you do eggs or whatever. They're wonderful. There's just two different ways to use garlic, the tops and the bottoms. This is from the garden this morning. This is our little cat feed up here. And this is lemongrass for the cat. Have to keep that on the counter. And then we have the morning harvest. This is what I live for. I just love this. We harvested the peaches and I like golden beets. My husband hates beets, but all the red ones are so messy. I grow the golden ones our first melon, and potatoes we grow in a sack. You take uh, two black plastic bags, put some dirt in it and throw some potato eyes in it. You can cut them, you know, you could cut them or just throw them in there and they grow up. You just put them outside, punch some holes in the bottom, and then you empty it out and you have all your potatoes ready. What's your favorite main meal? Mmm. 
Last night, our meal was pretty fun. We did dry roasted mussels with a butter sauce that you just dip your bread in. Uh, I love to make lobster stew because after we have lobster, I cook all the heads down and then I make a stew with it. And I like to eat the heads. My husband, the Yankee, thinks that's disgusting. He hates it. These are little patty squash. These are really fun to cook. And look at these tomatoes. These are yum, yum. And we grow onions. It's just, it's just so much fun to have fresh stuff. Some cucumbers, they're so cute. Watermelon, our first one. And these herbs are just, I use them all the time and I make teas with them. Like this is lemon verbatim. This smells, I wish you could smell this on the camera. It smells so good. I dry them all out and I make tea with it. And pineapple sage, have you ever had pineapple sage? It's great in salads, but it also makes a great tea. It's delicious. I, I do a lot of cocktails with herbs. Uh, uh, my favorite is a gin and tonic with a little bit of pink peppercorns and a little bit of thyme in it, and it makes it so pretty. It's so pretty, it's lovely. Like this is what I do with the garlic. And I have the other thing that I make with the garlic top. And then I make a garlic confit. That's all garlic. And this is also garlic confit. Just to give you a little bit of, oh, and this is my honey. I also have honey. And you I make a, this. yeah, that's my honey. And that's just some of the stuff that happens to be in the fridge. The rest of it's in the freezer. You can just, you know, I'll just lay them out like that. Now this honey is my concoction. I, I put, um, my honey concoction is I take garlic and I ferment it in honey. And then I add turmeric and ginger and lion's mane mushroom uh, extract to it and I drink it every day. And it's an immune system thing and it's really cool. Hi darling. This baby want a treat? Maybe that's what she wants. She wants a treat. She did she discovered a new kind of treat this morning and I think she likes it. You like your new kind of treat? The bookshelves are kind of fun. And these are the chihuly pieces uh, that are in the kitchen. And then we have another Rivington Pine here. Um, but they're all books that were mostly on the island. And we we found all the blue ones and stuck them together. <laughs> <laughs> you know, old books. And this is another Brian White piece that Rivington Pine began the piece and he passed away, he never finished it. So we hired Brian to finish it. And I was going to put it in the bedroom, but I thought his face was too scary. So we put him in here. And these are Richard Remsen, who's a local artist who studied with Chihuly and he did these cool lobster claws for us. And I know this also looks like a cluster that makes my very Virgo husband crazy, but I love to do drink, fun drink contest here. We have like gin tasting and everybody comes and we put little cups out and we add herbs to it and we have tastings and we have like five kinds of gin cause that's my new thing, but I also love tequila. So we have tequila tastings and it's just fun to start before a party and everybody gets in a really good mood. And then we have this Bo Bartlett and this uh, Ken Nolan, another Ken Nolan, but Bo Bartlett did this piece, which we love. It's called the anniversary. And Joe bought it for me for our anniversary. And Brian White <laughs> had this whale vertebra in his shop. And every time I'd go, I'd say, can I buy that? No, it's mine. And the next time we go, I said, Brian, come on, sell that to me. No, it's mine. And then one day the doorbell rang and Brian White is a very different kind of guy. He's uh, he didn't speak for the first two years we met him. He was just this big, giant teddy bear looking guy. And he walks in and the doorbell rings and he hands me the vertebra and he goes, I found a bigger one. And he walked away. <laughs> he just walked away. I go, thank you. Thank you very much. I am from New Iberia, Louisiana, where they make Tabasco sauce. I moved to Houston in 1986, and in around 1998, I met my husband on a blind date. The blind date was interesting in itself because I was with 12 women, 
and you might wonder about that. But um, this girlfriend called me and said, this guy's going to call you. And he called me on a Friday at four o'clock and said, would you like to have a drink? I said, what planet are you from? You don't call someone for a drive by on a Friday afternoon. And he said, well, I've been married for 27 years. I'm just recently divorced. I don't know the rules. I thought that was cute. So I invited him to my girlfriend's house. Well, we were in a group of 12 women. And when he drove up, he had this STS Cadillac in this like seersucker khaki looking suit. And I thought, this guy's going to be a dud. Let's all say we're Tina. And we did. We were 12 women in line. He went through the whole line. And when he got to me, he said, I hope that you're Tina. And he asked me out again, so he must have liked it. <laughs> and here we are. We had a child. I was 40. Had a child, my one and only child at 40. This is the guest room. And there's just one thing. This, this a couple things I want to show you. This chest came off of the island. We used to live on an island, my husband's family home. They've been here 100 years. And we took some antiques, uh, well, all of the antiques off of it that we liked because an island you have to put it on a barge take it off it's not exactly easy and then i bought him this great little sergeant which is right over here um recently at an auction here and it's right here it's so cute i just love it you know it because he painted it right before he died and he is a you know one of the top 10 american artists and i just knew joe would like it so i wanted to get it for him and you know it was in an auction and not everybody appreciated it, so I got a much better deal on it than you can imagine. Okay, not many people want you to see a bathroom, but I kind of do. Because the first piece that Brian White ever did for us, he did not want to do a bathroom. We met through a mutual friend. He said, tell your friend from Texas, no, I don't do bathrooms. Then he came over and saw the other art that we had and said, I'm doing what I want. I said, okay, Brian, and this is what he did. Now, I think it's pretty cool, and when Brian asked me if I liked it, I said, I love it, except the panties are too damn big. People are gonna think I have a big old butt. And so I told him if he ever did anything like that again, he needed to make tiny panties. These things, Joe, do you remember what these are from? I think they're from the late 1500s, and they were like, done on horseback and they had this big ball. I have more of them here. Put them on this wall because this wall was hard to do. So we, we just kind of mounted them, had this guy make these little pieces and mounted them on here just for fun. We're gonna go to the bedroom, one of my favorite places in the house and the most serene. This is the bedroom. We have some more of Riv, Riv's pieces, the darker ones, and another ugly baby head in here. And uh, this is a picture of my husband's grandmother, Florence, and her sister-in-law, Mary Cuttings Pine. Oh, they were the grand dames, the grand dames. They would get on the QE2 and go to London and spend their summers in London and stay at the Stafford. And when Joe and I started staying at the Stafford, the old bartender there remembered him. He remembered what they drank, what kind of martinis they liked, because five o'clock every day in the American bar, there they were, the two of them. Their husbands had passed away and they traveled together and hung out together. And I have this sable jacket and the pearls that she's wearing, which is so cool. And that sable jacket is just gorgeous and it's still in great shape. Look at her, she got her cigarette. So Mary lived in Far Hills, New Jersey, and she had an interesting next door neighbor. Uh, and she uh, decided to invite him over for tea, and he was a Tyson. She must have thought he was from the chicken people, but it was Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson walks in for tea with Aunt Mary, with his entourage, with his gold chains, and sits down and has tea with her for an hour. So I wish I could have been a fly on the wall for that encounter. But can you even imagine? How cute that was. This is another Brian White piece, uh, probably his most famous piece. It's a wedding dress with a Tiffany box and it's all done of shells. And this is like this hard stuff that he uses, which is like a canvas that he somehow hardens. And each of those pieces with shells and beads, I just love that. But the highlight of this room is the view.
And this is John Pine. He's 16 years old and he belongs to our daughter. However, he has been here for about a year, if you know how that goes. When your kid has an animal, you sometimes get it back. His eyes are blue and everything is serene, just like him. It, I designed this room the color of the cat. That is what this whole house is, very simple furnishings, neutral colors, because the art and the view are what it's all about. As I said, it's a view with a house. And I mean, you wake up in the morning and see this, it's just incredible. It's hard to be in a bad mood. This is the bathroom. When we bought this house, this bathroom, I cannot tell you how fugly it was. It had an eight person tub, mirrors on the ceiling, mirrors in the front, navy blue, navy blue granite or marble rather, navy blue marble. It was so bad, but our daughter loved it because it was like a pool inside. And Joe finally said, I can't stand to look at this another day. We have to change it. But these windows were here. And look at this, you sit in the tub and look at this view. Not bad. We're going to the barn, the barn that got out of hand. The barn that can hold a lot of stuff that was supposed to be built for one little tractor. You'll see. This is a Jeremy Guy um, sculpture piece that he is a London born, ar London born artist who lives in Canada. This art piece and the other one in the front, are, and more that you'll see, um, I did. I worked with Rockport Steel and did them, and it was so much fun. And that one, uh, art dealer friend of ours came from California, and she just commissioned me to do three more, so yay! Be fun. We built a little workout room. I wish we used it a little more <laughs> for our guests that come and, and the kids play ping pong. That's a picture of Cammy when she was a little baby. Of course, gotta have all of the nautical flags up there. Welcome to the garden, which is so much fun. I think they're called Rose Mallow and they're really fun and they're in the hibiscus family and there's some pink ones back there that you can't see. And this is lemon balm, which I make tea with makes wonderful tea. You dry it out and chop it up and just drink it. And there's some nasturtiums and corn and oh my gosh. And then we have these really cool onions that are just about finished. We had all of our garlic, but let's just grab an onion. A little onion. <laughs> Everybody needs an onion. I don't even remember. It starts with an L. Uh, the name of these, but we decided to grow them and see how they did this year. So they're new. And these are these little teddy bear sunflowers, uh, different types. They're so cute. I just love them. They're furry and there's some borage and some peppers over here and some wildflowers and some squash over here like we I showed you that uh, petty squash. But the corn stalks are fun to also, we keep them because we decorate with them for, for uh, October. Aren't these just pretty? And that's all sage, because sage comes back and I just think it makes a great filler. So it's really fun to have sage. We grow, oh, look at these. We took these off of the island, sweet peas, and these are perennials, which you can't even find anymore. So we just really cherish them. And some Swiss chard. But this is all um, delicata, which is my favorite squash. I see a cucumber over there. I see a cucumber. And this was um, lettuces, but you know, now it, it, they're kind of finished. And we had some more corn, which is finished. And this is the potatoes I was telling you about. Um, we have sweet potatoes in here that we haven't harvested, but these are sweet potatoes. And you see, it's just in a bag. You could use a black trash, trash bag to do it, but these are just a little more. We've harvested, we had bags lined all along. So as they harvest, as they're ready, and you can tell because they flower and it kind of falls over like this. So these are ready to harvest. And these are little red potatoes in this one. We harvested some purple fingerlings 
And then these are all fruit trees here. This is, we harvested the peaches. Here's a peach they missed. A little peach, we just harvested the peaches this morning. These are, oh God, they're so good. Yum, 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 yum. So this whole area was woods where we needed to build that thing here for that little tractor. And this is what became of it. And then I told you about the dining hall. So let's look at that next. This is the second property we bought, what we call the dining hall. It's this Frank Lloyd Wright design, little house, and it's just cute. You wanna see it? Okay. So we bought it and we painted it because it was dark like lots of that stuff was. And the people that owned it were from New York and they hadn't been here in 10 years. They didn't even have a kitchen. So we added a little kitchen and we took some restoration hardware tables, put them together, bought some chairs, built the little benches. We have actually seated 50 people for a wine dinner here to benefit the hospital. We have these little tables that come here. And the fun thing about those dinners is when you get here, you have a bowl, which I'm gonna show you, of rocks. And you have to pick a rock. And the rock has a number on it, okay? And each seat has a number. So you don't know who you're gonna sit next to and it makes dinner parties so much more fun because you may have somebody stuffy around somebody really fun and you can't sit by your spouse. And we turned this part of it, which was just a porch, into a cute little bar. Well, I don't know how cute it is, but it's functional. And it's a bar and everybody congregates in here and comes and we mix drinks and see, I gotta have my pink peppercorns everywhere because I use that in the gin and tonics. And we have storage under here in the bench and enclose this as part of the house. So when we bought this place, we thought we're gonna use it for parties. We're gonna have dinners. So we decided to put a fireplace and we really wanted a pizza oven. So we told the fireplace guy, the stone worker, could you just put a pizza oven in the back of it and you have heat? So he did, it's not huge. I'm scared to open it. Uh, it's not huge, but it, you know, you can make your pizzas in here. And, and I always put a roast at night because you got that heat. You don't ever want to waste your heat in a pizza oven. And then we have one of those Brazilian grills where you turn the handle. But I guess the most important thing we need to look at is my husband's boat. He loves the boat. So we're going to walk down and take a look. Here we are at the boat, my husband's favorite part. He loves his boat. Have you ever seen a dog when they're in a car and they're sticking their head out with their tongue? That's how he is driving that boat. It's his happy place. This is our property called the tree house. It's the last piece of property that we bought and I'm gonna take you inside. But before I do, I wanna tell you about these crazy sculpture pieces. Rockport Steel is who I work with to do my sculpture and I was walking around and saw this scrap on the ground and that's it. I painted them, turned them upside down, and made them into sculpture. And that's a piece of driftwood that was on the property. Welcome to the treehouse. The treehouse was the last piece that we bought. We didn't do very much to it except paint and, of course, furnish it. That's another Brian White piece. Boy, I have a lot of his stuff. And that's another Bo Bartlett, which I just love. This is a table that we had in Houston that we refinished and had done. I'm also going to show you something that I found at the Ham Museum in Los Angeles that I could not resist buying. Three of them. They're made by Herman Miller. And, ah, and when you're drinking, it's really fun. <laughs> See why we call it the tree house? They kind of look like pieces of art. I mean, they can sit, you know, up and they, they were all lined up at the Hammer Museum. They must have had 12 of them. And then I saw these kids jump on them and start 
playing with them and I just thought, oh my God, I have to have them. They're just so much fun. So when we lived on the island, I commissioned a portrait of the island and I got my husband's boat. You think there was a sidebar in there? I mean, yes, that's the house, but the boat is what he did the painting of. These are Rosa Rugosas, very common in Maine. They're sea roses because they can take the elements, but a lot of people don't know that when they're finished, that these are full of vitamin C. It's rose hips. You just crunch, dry them out. I, I put them like a big tray on a cookie sheet in the oven for, I turn the oven on 200 when it gets to two, and put them in. When it gets to 200, I turn the oven off and leave them in there till they're dry. And then I take them and crunch them up and make tea with them. It's still, they're delicious. I mix it with mint, I mix it with lemon balm. A lot of stuff that I grow, I make so many different teas and rose petals as well. Makes great tea, it gives it great flavor. It's really fun. They, they were roses. This is a secondary market. At one point they were <laughs> Yeah, rose. yeah, like this rose. Where did we just see some? See what this rose is? And these are the old kind that um, smell good, but this is what a Rosa Rugosa, I mean, this is the end of it. It's not super pretty, but that's what it looks like. And then it turns to this, they dry up. This and then to the dry part. So you could just pick the dry ones and make tea full of vitamin C, chock full. So this is the guest cottage and I saved showing it to you for last because it might be my favorite, but I have to tell you, different people that stay here choose different houses. It's so bizarre. Everybody has different tastes of what they like. Come and have a look. We have our zanias. Are these just fabulous? I love them. I use them for cut flowers. And in the other pots, I decided to make a little herb garden here for somebody that's staying here. Just some mint and some basil and rosemary and parsley. And of course, I have to have pineapple sage on everything. Welcome to the guest cottage. This place we bought with the original house and it was not complete. The stone, well, the stone work was done, which would have cost us a fortune. And the inside was a total shell. So we got to do exactly what we wanted. I wanted to make it look somewhat like a ship, you know, kind of the feel of the water. And so we did, it's got two bedrooms and it is where a lot of people like to stay because it's really cute. And it's just super comfortable. We did the kitchen with drawers so you wouldn't have all of your appliances up. And of course it's got its own little bar like every other house. This is Joe's contribution to the guest cottage. He cannot stand to have a television showing. So this is called Reversica and he had this put in here, which I think is so cute. And you can't tell it's a TV. So this is the second bedroom. There's two bedrooms in this house. We went to auction and bought this in Thomaston, Maine. And I just wanted to make it feel really serene. This little area here has fabulous views and you could just sit here and read a book and hang out. I mean, it's just super comfortable. This is the master guest room of the guest house. And we have twin granddaughters. They're 17 now, but when they were little, we got chair and a half that pull out to single beds. So their parents could stay in this room and they could stay in the room too. It's just, it's just comfortable. It's just a fun, comfortable kind of place. So my husband started playing golf in the last few years and this was a regulation croquet court, which we used, but it was really hard to take care of. So I called this golf company to surprise him. I got this with this view. We have a trail that goes up to the main house, which is uh, like a goat trail. There's a bench in the middle for a reason because it is not easy to climb. But I mean, what kind of putt-putt range do you have with this kind of view? Of course, Texas flags on the holes. I'm happy where I'm planted. Wherever I am is where my family is and that's where I'm happy. 
and I try to make it comfortable for everyone. I love to cook. Uh, I cook a lot when I'm here. We eat a lot of meals at home and we have friends come over and we have, we, we're out on this patio so much. It's just so much fun to be here. There's so many, and everything's organic on the property. The food is fabulous in Maine. We live in, we live five minutes from three James Beard restaurants. We live within 10 minutes, you have the airport and the snow bowl in the winter. And of course, five minutes from three golf courses, which makes it really special. Hi, Homeworthy. I'm Georgia. This is Tilly. Welcome to our Bermuda home and come right in. I'm Georgia Crow Benavides, and we're in my house, my and my husband's house, and Tilly's house, of 25 years, and we're sitting in our living room. So we're in Bermuda, which I've lived here for 35 years. My husband was born here, and we've, uh, I fell in love with it as soon as I moved here. Like, and I came here two weeks after a hurricane, and everybody was apologizing, and it was just, to me, the most magical place on earth. So I feel very lucky to live here. I'm an architect who uh, dabbles in interior design, so I think I'm mainly an architect. I'm trained as an architect. I went to the University of Houston Architecture School and had my bachelor's of architecture, and um, moved to Bermuda shortly after college, where I sat next to my husband, who's also an architect, and we started our firm 30 years ago when I was on maternity leave. <laughs> and we've just been very lucky. We've been very busy. And uh, I still, after all these years, love what I do a lot. Well, I tried, I'm from Texas. So believe it or not, I tried to marry a Southern home with a Bermuda home. So that's how this house came about. And it was, it was a really interesting lot because it was almost a cliff all the way down to the water. So we, it was a little bit of a challenge building this house. And as you know, the driveway is very steep, but I think this whole house started with the tall ceilings and the, what we call in the South, a dog run, where you walk right through from the front door to the back door. And the columns, the columns are actually similar to a column I saw in Louisiana. And uh, so I think that's kind of how the house came about. And I knew I wanted transoms and I knew I wanted tall windows and the ceilings are 11 feet tall. So there were a lot of things I wanted in this house and luckily I got them, including wooden windows, which was a talk with my husband. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they were a lot more expensive than the plastic windows, but there was no way I was going to go this far and do the plastic windows. So, uh, so it, it worked out and the windows were a fair chunk of change, but I think that they make the house and, uh, and they've held up really well because I think a lot of people use these other types of windows thinking they're going to last forever. And honestly, we renovated a 300-year-old house that had the original windows, and we were able to rebuild them. So that's pretty impressive. So this is my entrance hall, and this is our stairs going upstairs. And I just uh, always like having a bench in the entrance hall. And this is a bench I've got from British Khaki, who unfortunately I don't think he's in business anymore. But it's out of Rosewood, and he was just like an amazing British colonial furniture, West Indies furniture maker. And then this is one of my paintings. And um, I love to paint, especially to fill in gaps around my house. And uh, these are Ironwork International sconces, which I think were the first thing I bought. And I have um, these um, from Paris, actually, these lights that I love etched. Anything etched, I love it. And our staircase, I can tell you a really interesting story about the staircase. So the guy who made my staircase 
this whole part he brought as one piece of wood and he sat here and carved it for four days to make this one piece. Isn't that amazing? And then this is my living room. Um, one thing you'll probably see is I do collect a lot of surf art. Well, I used to surf when I was young, before I got scared of sharks. <laughs> so now my son surfs. But uh, yeah, I just always thought it was a cool culture. So I started collecting artwork that was surf, surf related when I was young. And then this is kind of a funny story. This is a spirit pole from Laguna Beach. And I was at an art gallery in Laguna Beach and it's an Aspen, it's supposed to give off good vibes and you bought it in groups of three. And I bought the three and I had to put a 30 percent deposit and I came home and my husband hated it so I had to keep the 30 percent so I got one of the spirit one of the three spirit poles and this is from the Bermuda library when they when the main library closed down this was a library table that we got at auction and it's one of my favorite things because I probably have way too many photos but I just love all the memories, like the memories of my son when he was little, with his best friend, my aunt and my grandmother. And as you see, I collect heron. And when I got married, when I registered to get married, I actually registered for figurines <laughs> in Sturt of China. And uh, so anyway, I have a lot of figurines. How did your husband feel about that? You know what? He was kind of okay with it. It didn't bother him. So, uh, so I just kept going. And then this, and then I've always collected these leather um, photo albums that I keep all the scraps from when my baby was little and his artwork and photos. And I have like six of them in this cabinet. <laughs> So, uh, so they're great. I mean, I've documented everything. So I just have, um, look, mom, I hope you're feeling better. And then some kind of weird drawing. <laughs> they're mainly my son. So uh, this is actually my husband. Somebody gave this to me because my son and my husband had the same teacher and they looked exactly alike. And he had this photo when they were the same age, and it was just funny. So, uh, so I have everything. I mean, I have this is all his artwork. I have so much stuff in these photo albums. It's insane, and much more there. So I don't know what he's. I'm going to do when he gets married and starts having children. So this is a uh, bone inlay, which I love, and I always like having a few bone in inlay pieces around because I just think it's so pretty. And this is from India. And then these are photos. My mother's Cuban. And these are photos of my grandparents in Cuba. And these are my grandparents on the beach in Cuba. So I love, I love these photos of that time and their life when it was kind of glamorous and Cuba was a whole different thing than it is now, even though it is still beautiful. We had to live here five years before I was allowed to buy this. And uh, this is from a company called Exquisite Surfaces, and I designed it to fit the opening. I wanted a really big fireplace. And actually, when we moved in, our son was this tall, and I have the cutest picture, I couldn't put my fingers on it right now, of him and like his friends standing here in the fireplace. It was very cute. But so five years later, I got this, and it took eight guys to carry this in and hang it on the wall. I'm not sure how it's hung on the wall, but I love it. We use it a lot in the winter. So I'll light a big fire in here and um, you can see, and it works, it draws. So we got this five years after we moved in and then my mother unfortunately passed away and she had like so many baby cups for me and my brothers and my brothers didn't want any of the baby cups. And I just thought they were the most amazing thing next to hair and figurines. And so I got, luckily, the guardianship of all the baby cups, <laughs> which are sweet. Sometimes we'll have a dinner party and I'll put all the little flowers in the baby cups. And, uh, but this is really pretty at Christmas because I light all the candles and I have my Christmas stockings and we'll put a big fire on. 
So it's, it's a special fireplace. I love it. And the silver never stops. There might even be some silver hidden away places that's not on display. My mother also had all the sterling photo frames, which I've kept out and um, spent a lot of time cleaning. And this was my mother's Bombay chest. And my mother actually, this is the setup my mother had in her entrance hall in Houston. So she had this with that mirror. So I tried to keep that because I always thought that was cool when I walked in her house. Unfortunately, when it came to Bermuda, it, the humidity kind of got to the Bombay chest, but I'm working on that. <laughs> so this is, um, this is a, a backgammon board that I actually had made on Dixie Highway in Palm Beach. By, there's a store called the Rattan Shop, which unfortunately, I think about a year ago, Rick died. So Rick made the tables and his girlfriend Charlene made the decoupage. So I had her do surfboards and seashells. And, um, and then it was my idea actually to do the sand dollars as pieces. So I'm still working on the perfect combo for the dark ones color, but, um, but the blue's good. My brother lives in Laguna Beach, so that's why I have a lot of artwork from Laguna Beach. There's an artist there, David Kluver, who you'll see a lot of his photos around the house. I just think he does really clever stuff. And uh, so, and so I have a lot of his artwork. Okay, so more silver. Um, I also, on top of the baby cups, got all the rattles. And then, but this is my son's little shoe that I thought was so cute. So, um, so but I, this was my baby rattle. This was, this is actually my mother's bill to call people at dinner. <laughs> and then this, these are just other baby rattles and a little thing to hold um, your baby tooth. So uh, I just love stuff like that. I think it's cool and I kind of almost feel like it's a dying thing now. Like I don't see that many baby rattles, but I think they're sweet. It has the tooth fairy on the top. Oh, so, well, the, I was just going to point this out that my husband was supposed to hang this on the wall, but it hasn't happened yet. But he was the Commodore at the Yacht Club through COVID. So that was an interesting. And they just gave him this, which I thought was really sweet. So it's a Royal Bermuda Yacht Club's flag, and it's in a Bermuda cedar f frame. So uh, Commodore David Benavides during COVID. It doesn't say during COVID, but it was. <laughs> so anyway, so I thought that was cool, and one day that will make it up on the wall, I hope. So we're going to go to the great room in a minute, but first I thought we'd go outside and see our beautiful backyard. Welcome to our backyard. So this is our huge porch that's 15 feet deep because I've decided over the years that 15 feet is what it takes to be able to sit out here when it's raining and not get wet. And it's 48 feet wide. And I set up two different tables because it gave me the option to have 12 people or 18 people. It just gave me a lot of options with the number of people I was having. I could have a small party or a big party. And I am having a party tonight. So I have started to set up flowers and started to set the table. So, and I have two different table settings. This is the way I normally have it with all these little pots. And then I have kind of a little nicer one over there. And I have the same, you'll see when you go in my great room, I have the same chairs inside that I do outside because it gives me some versatility. So I can bring the chairs from inside to outside. And I've had the same Lloyd Flander sage green chairs for 30 years. I just, they work. So I have a whole bunch of them and I've replaced them over the years and some of these you'll see I probably should replace, but I'll get to that. So basically I didn't want it to look like it was an outdoor space and I didn't really want outdoor furniture. I didn't want that typical look of being outside. So that's why I keep a table here and in the evening I'll put a lamp on the table and I just feel like it makes it look like it's a living room, not just the porch and even with the cushions like I've never had proper cushions made for here because I feel like the loose cushions like this just give it a little more of a character so so it's not a bunch of fitted cushions 
but it's still comfortable. This is not a heron bunny, but I am obsessed with bunnies. And I, I do have one pink penguin. <laughs> but I do like this blue and white, uh, the pink and white china. I think it's cute for outdoor stuff. And I'm really into garden seats. So I have lots of garden seats. You'll see them in my den. I use them for everything because they, they're so versatile. You can sit on them or you can put stuff on them and they're just really great. Tilly loves it here. She's a very happy little dog. She gets to run. We have an acre and a half. So we have a path that goes down to our dock and she'll run halfway down and run all the way up and then she's got her exercise for the day. So it's, that part's really good. And it's just, it's um, a beautiful spot, as you can see, to sit out here. So this is our other table with our other grouping of chairs and a different, different candle situation. So this table I'll use if I'm wanting to do something a little more formal. And that table I use if I'm wanting to do something casual. Or sometimes I'll decorate both of them exactly the same. And this is our pool area. This is where my son wants to get married. So he wants to be on the point here and have all the chairs along here. So we're working on that now. And then our pool area, this is where my husband and I sit a lot in the evening and have a glass of wine. So it's very hot. You, uh, you need this pool. It's like 90 degrees today, I think, and 100% humidity. So it's uh, a little sweltering. The pool's a little warm, but it's refreshing. So, and I have more garden seats over there, my Adirondack chairs, which are on their last legs, but they seem to keep hanging in there. Uh, this is an interesting Bermuda feature, the buttery. There's a lot of butteries around the island and they used to actually be to make butter in. And so a lot of the old houses, especially the really old houses, the 300 year old houses will have a buttery where because of the way the roof was configured, they thought it kept everything a little cooler inside so people would store certain things in there. And that's a bell buttery. A lot of people don't do bell butteries, they do step butteries, but um, it's just a cool Bermuda detail. And this is the column I was talking about that I tried to um, copy a classic column I saw in New Orleans. And I, it was actually one of my first features of the house is I spent a long time getting the detail right on this column and that column up there. And I did want the two-story porch because I wanted to have a whole second floor space that I could use for something. And we do use it for entertaining. And when we go into the great room, you'll see the window behind you, but you can see that from inside all opens up so that if it's a pretty day and it's not humid, that whole den room is part of this room. So it's really great. So now I'm gonna show you something really special. And we have a dock down here and we have turtles. We just saw some turtles. And what we've done when we built these steps is we also put in what we're hoping is going to be a bee sanctuary and a butterfly sanctuary. So come on down to the dock. This is our dock. It's completely a work in progress, but we've just put the steps in. So now we're trying to clean it up and figure out how we want it to be. So we're gonna try and straighten it up and figure out this coral, but it has a lot of cool things. That cove has a lot of turtles. This is a fish pot where our, the previous owner kept all his catch for the week. So down here, we nor sometimes I have my rubber dinghy, but we've had it out for repair. So that I keep here and I can drive it. It's only 15 feet, so I can drive it by myself with the dog. And sometimes on a night like this, we'll go out to that island out there that has one of the most beautiful beaches in Bermuda. It takes like three minutes to get out to the island and we'll just go swimming. Uh, yesterday, we saw an octopus. We saw two turtles yesterday. We saw two turtles today from up at our house. Uh, there's different kinds of fish. There's clownfish, bluefish. There's usually a ton of fish in here. 
There's coral, there's seahorses. We just, we get a lot in this cove. This time of day, the sun's a little bit down, so you don't see the water as clearly, but in the middle of the day, we, you can see everything. And there's some amazing things in here. And I'm slowly trying to, I actually made contact with a guy who grows coral, and I'm trying to get him to put in a little coral field here, because I think that would be really cool. But we do, because Harrington sounds kind of protected, I think that's why we get so many great things in here. We don't have a lot of boat traffic. It's just a real beautiful body of water. So we bought this as a lot, and we were actually at a party on a hill right behind this. And I was standing next to a realtor, and I said, I really like this view. And he goes, he pointed this lot that was full of boats. It was a boat storage. And it was all these different levels. And he said, that's for sale. And we bought it literally two days later. And then we started with how it was going to be. And I knew I wanted kind of a Georgian type house because Bermuda is a British colony and it's very British colonial. So that was part of what I was looking for. And, um, and I just wanted, I wanted a little kind of slightly grand house that was Southern. And anyway, it was, it's been a labor of love. So we're in our kitchen now, which um, it, we actually just had repainted about right before COVID. But for 25 years, I think it's held up really well. It was built by the Amish and we had it brought in. And I just think they did an amazing job. Uh, it's just really like there was no need to replace it. It was in such good shape. So it's definitely a piece of furniture, a great piece of furniture. We did a cherry butcher block countertop, which we had refinished at the same time. And it just came up beautiful. So for a week, I wouldn't let anyone touch it. And uh, our floors are e-pay throughout the house. And we have, um, this is something, I'm not gonna show it to you because it's a mess, but I have like a little coffee station in here. Then I keep my china up here, but most of my upper cabinets are glass because I just like that look. So I figure you might as well see the china even though I have it messy. I should have taken out some of that stuff, but <laughs> it's, it's fine. And this is just a little vignette I did. I always like having fresh citrus in the house. I have honey every day. We have a local honey person who does amazing honey. So I try and put a teaspoon of that in something every single day. It's just wonderful. And Bermuda, we're actually really lucky. There's a whole bunch, like this honey guy's young. He's not even 30. And he's come here and started this whole little business and has the cutest little label. And we have so many young people moving here doing so many amazing things. So I feel happy that there's an influx of Bermudians coming back and starting creative little businesses. Uh, this is my son surfing in Laguna Beach when he was 10. So I love having fresh flowers. I love having palm leaves like I have in the other room, but we do have a lot of Bermuda roses in our garden. So I like having the Bermuda roses in the yard. We do have a couple of hydrangea bushes. So we're lucky hydrangeas don't grow here really well. They have to be in a pot because there's something acidic about our land but if you put them in a pot we have two by the front door and they're just one of my favorite flowers but I love the Bermuda rose I have more heron um, I made a little bar for our dinner party tonight with a, there's a Bermuda gin company which is one of those young people who've moved back to the island Gosling's rum has become worldwide renowned but uh, that's a Bermuda-based company. So I thought that was cool. I could not find a Bermuda-based tequila, but I think that's some kind of copyright thing with Mexico. Uh, these are my, this is my son and his best friend. These are, I used to collect when he was little, I collected marbles for him. And the coral's actually from a beach, Cambridge in Bermuda. So I have a ton of marbles, but those are my favorites. More heron. Um, me and my husband when we were in our 20s. <laughs> we look so young. Uh, my son again in Laguna Beach. 
So again, I, I really like having some bone inlay in every room, even if it's just one piece. And so here you'll see in our master, here I have these Robert Kime chairs that I love. These are more of the Lloyd Flanders chairs that I have outside, which is, I think that is one of the best things I've ever done is have all the chairs matching. It just makes it so versatile. You can take the chairs outside, like I can rent another table the size of those two outside and have like a huge dinner party across the whole porch, which I've done. And with all the surf collecting, another thing I have whenever we move somewhere is I always have a surfboard. I like having a surfboard in the room. I think it's just kind of part of the whole thing with the surf culture. So I thought that was a pretty color and I bought that in the States, and um, it just kind of sits there. It doesn't have to go to work. <laughs> and then this is my book. So I did this with a friend of mine. We had the foreword by Michael Douglas, and he wrote a really nice foreword. He was very sweet about it, and all the money we made from this book went to a charity, a couple of charities, but mainly a charity called the Family Center that's here in Bermuda. So we, we actually did pretty well. We sold. 3,000 books in two months, so we did really well. And it's um, just, we, there wasn't really a book like this in Bermuda, so we just like tried to do, like this is what we do every weekend. We do raft ups. And, uh, oh, this is an above ground water tank, so it just shows some of the cool old things that we have in Bermuda and with pretty much every picture has people in it. So we wanted it to show Bermuda architecture, but also have people in it. And we're about to do another one. So, um, so it's, it was a really fun book to do. This is our house at night. So this is 12 years ago, back when I had my beloved Jack Russell. And this was just a dinner party we had, where I set both the tables up, like I have now. And all the furniture is the same. This is a girl, Dana Cooper. Do you know Dana? She does these Lily Pulitzer like things, like ties. And she's local. And um, these, I just had these recovered in Katie Ritter fabric, which I love. And so this is my new favorite addition to the house is all these all this colorful stuff. I just had brown fabric before, which was not as happy. This is very happy. My, this, oh, this is a um, checkerboard I made uh, out of mosaics. I took a mosaic class and made a checkerboard. So, and then I went to a local shell company and bought all the shells. So, uh, so it's kind of fun. Nobody plays it that much, but it's cute. Uh, I have more fresh flowers, more seashells, more garden seats. <laughs> I love the garden seat. So this is my office. This is where I do my architecture, my interior design, and I paint in here, but it has a view. So um, it's a great place. And on a beautiful day, I have both the doors open and it's like I'm working outside by the pool, which is amazing. But I, right now I'm in the middle of a project where I am helping with the fabrics. So these are some of the fabrics and wallpapers that I'm using. I am always cutting things and doing different things and I'm really into terrazzo these days. These paintings are, the paintings just don't really go anywhere. They just pile up I have because I do paint quite a bit. So hopefully my son will want them. You know, it's kind of funny because I, I think it's just really bits and bobs. I don't think there's one style here. I think it's very eclectic. And I think it's mainly things that I've just found over the years that I really like. And I'm lucky they go together because they wouldn't normally, I think, go together. So, I, and the colors, everybody has, I mean, our home, we kind of went for that gray look with dark green shutters, but that's a standard Bermuda color. White's a big color. Um, our house next door is a coral color. Two doors down, there's a pink house. There, we try and stay clear of purple, but some people do do purple. 
There's a lot of blue houses. I mean, there's every color. There's, it's a very colorful island, and when you look out over like a hill or something and see all the different color houses, it's really special. So now I'm gonna show you a terrace that we didn't really have to build, but I really wanted to build it. And it's funny, even though we don't keep furniture on it, it serves multiple uses. So we, when my son was little, we used it for a sleeping porch, and kids would have campouts here. And then as he's gotten older, we use this for entertaining. And last time we had a party here, we took both those benches and moved them so they were parallel and covered them in candles and had a huge table here and had like little bistro lights. And it was just amazing. The view from up here is just, it's like a whole different world space than downstairs. So I love this porch. And I'll sit up here and read, and uh, it's just an amazing spot. So Bermuda's special, and it's just the beauty. It's so beautiful. The water, well, when we go outside here, you can see the view, but the water here is just beyond. And there, you know, I have turtles off my dock. Um, I. So, oh, we saw an octopus yesterday off the dock. I mean, it's just really, it's a, an amazing place. You're living in a sophisticated small town, but we have all the amenities of a big city, but we live on a tiny island where we can go snorkeling in five minutes. And um, it's just amazing. So this is our master bedroom, and um, we this is one of the first beds we got. We had a little bed right before this, and it's from Ralph Lauren, and I just thought it was beautiful. And my husband painted the walls lilac. I wanted lilac walls. He used three different color lilacs, and he took a whole weekend to paint them, and I think he nailed it. I think he got the perfect color. And these are kind of an interesting story. These lamps, or these candelabras are silver, but not for my mother. They're from Round Top in Texas. And I had them electrified. And while I was in Texas, I always got some cowhide um, lampshades. And so I think it's kind of cool, the whole silver with the um, lampshade. And then this, you'll probably notice we have no carpets because we go to the beach a lot. So I find no matter how much you clean your feet when you come from the beach, there's always sand. And I just want everything to clean up the sand as easy as possible. And as far as curtains, we also have, we have curtains in our master bathroom and we have curtains here because the sun comes up right here. But it's, we're really private. We're way up here. And I kind of, we like going to bed and waking up, seeing the view. At night, the view is all the lights on the harbor. And it's just, we love it. We love our view. And then this is, um, again, a bone inlay piece. I love having a bone inlay piece and more heron, because why not? And uh, this is a painting that I did that my husband hung up so you could see it. So this is our master bathroom. And we, it was modeled after a Chinese restaurant that used to be in New York called Chin Chin's that we loved because it had this dark molding all the way around the room and then it had photographs all above the dark molding. So we made that into a bathroom. I added little bits and bobs like this is a mess you're not going to see in there but it's two feet deep but it doesn't come into the room so it goes into our closet which is on the other side and the same with the drawers and that was to cover the toilet it doesn't quite but anyway and back when we built this uh, limestone was really in style and I actually still like it and I think we were one of the first clients of waterworks so uh, this is all waterwork stuff and it's held up really well. And one thing I really do like are these, I've used these in a lot of house, the glass um, towel holders. I think they're so sweet. 
So, uh, and we do a lot of pedestal sinks. And again, my husband, credit for the walls. He did this amazing blue using four or five different blues and I think even a little brown. He just, he's really good at it. And uh, these are cool. These photographs are old Bermuda and a girl found these old film and she developed, I think, just 20 of each. And I think that they're really beautiful, like the old lily fields. Bermuda had some beautiful lily fields. People used to get around on horse and buggy. They're just, they're great photos. So, uh, and then quadrille. Bermuda, the styles of the home are really interesting because we have a lot of things that are unique to Bermuda and I don't know why more places don't do this. So every house here is made out of concrete block. We don't have wooden houses. So if a hurricane comes through, sometimes if it's a really bad hurricane, we always write it out. My husband insists on writing it out in the house. And sometimes I can feel the house vibrating, but I always know the house is going to hold it together. And the only thing that really damages the house is the odd tornado. But the homes here are so well built, it's just incredible. And then the other thing I think is really unique about Bermuda architecture is we catch all our rainwater. So we don't have water pumped to each home. We, my, our whole roof catches the rainwater and then our whole tank in the back holds the rainwater. It's 11 feet deep and it holds enough water to last us through any drought and so that's so I feel like we're kind of self-circulating that way and if I could talk my husband into buying a generator we would be completely self-circulating <laughs> but sometimes we do lose power but uh, for the most part I don't our homes are just really well built and unusually built and in Bermuda, you can see all the roofs are white because everybody's catching the rainwater. So we have to have a certain type of um, roof construction to make it safe to catch the rainwater. Home's everything. I mean, it's my sanctuary. It's where I stay. Like, I would rather stay home than go out nine times out of ten. I just love being here. I think I'm very lucky after being in this house for so long. It's everything I love and it's just, it's a happy place. I love when my son comes here. I love when we just have an evening at home. It's, it's everything. I love home. So this is all Cliff Walk. And that's Land's End, the big house, where we used to live for years. And this whole property was eight and a half acres. And now we have three acres. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, I'm Victoria Mealy. Welcome to Newport. I can't wait to show you around my home and introduce you to my family. My parents owned this entire property. They bought it in 1952. And um, after my father died, my mother sold Land's End in 1957 and moved over here to what was the gardener's cottage. This was still an eight car garage. Um, and then in 1968, she attached the two houses. Uh, my husband and I bought Land's End back in 1989 from the, the people who had it then and we lived there for 30 years and when she passed away in 2018 we sold that house and moved over here this house and especially this room is a little bit of a mishmash of her things my things from next door and every house i've ever lived in so it's quite an ec eclectic collection I'm Nick Mealy. I'm her favorite son. Um, I'm a professional photographer um, and uh, I've grown up coming here my entire life um, and now I get to bring my wife and two kids here to enjoy Newport. And to make his mother crazy. <laughs> I have a new book out uh, called The Newport Summer. 
Um, it is a uh, coffee table book uh, available everywhere and it's kind of uh, 20 years of me uh, photographing here over the summers. Uh, people, parties, houses, details, lifestyle, um, everything. Uh, dogs, um, like my beautiful dog Lola here. Um, and um, it's uh, kind of um, Slim Aarons esque a summer in Newport, really June, July, August, September. My mother, Marion Oates Leiter Charles, was one of the grand dames of Newport. People called her Oatsy, and she made everyone feel uh, like they were the only one in the room. She did. You know, which is one of her, her, her many talents. She was brought up to, uh, mainly probably because she was from the South, um, she was brought up to entertain and amuse and, you know, and be smart and be able to talk on a great variety of subjects. She was great friends with Jack Kennedy, with Nancy Reagan. Um, the list goes on and on. She uh, sat next to uh, Prince Charles at a dinner. On oh, she told him he was a hell of a prince at the end of the dinner. He absolutely loved her. She had incredible wit and would say anything to anyone. And people sort of just flocked to her. And uh, she was very big on the social scene in Washington for many years knew all the presidents and all the politicians and and led sort of a fascinating life. I mean, she once said to me, you realize you grew up knowing people that other people only read about in books. And that was true. She was a very, um, a very interesting person. I was scared of her for the majority <laughs> of my childhood. She wasn't, you know, very child friendly. Um, <laughs> it wasn't until I uh, hit college and in, in my 20s that I really got to um, appreciate her. Um, and she also taught me that you can get really far with a good sense of humor and being charming. Um, you know, it's kind of like that Oscar Wilde quote, um, it's ridiculous to divide people into good or bad. People are either charming or tedious. It's just always been my philosophy. <laughs> I, I, guess I, I guess I'm an intellectual snob. I don't really care where you came from or what you do as long as you're interesting. This was an eight car garage where we're standing right now. Um, and the other side of the house, which you'll see later, was the gardener's cottage. In 68, she connected the two houses and she turned this part into the library, uh, office, and this living room. The main furniture was hers, except for these two wonderful black lacquer pieces. I have a thing about stuffed birds, which I absolutely love, and I bought those peacocks at an auction here in Newport and ordered some plastic mm, greenery from Amazon and stuck them in those stands and attached everything. So all these pictures on either side of the fireplace were our collection of interiors of places we've lived. The bottom one was my living room in Washington, uh, the middle one, my living room next door at Land's End, and the top one was her library in Washington. Well, this is, oh, this is, uh, the four-year-old loves this because he put the whole collection of crabs, every time he sees them, he puts them all in the box, and he thinks that's great fun. But um, it's just, these have always been on this table. Wait, hold on, this is a perfect chance for me to plug my book. Um, because I took the uh, interior uh, pages right from this fabric. I took a photo and so it's all matching. Uh, this has been here since 1968 and it's really held up remarkably well. It's one of the few things that isn't frayed and shredded. <laughs> we bring shabby chic to a whole new level. <laughs> This picture was by Howard Cushing, who was a very well-known painter who lived right across the way. This was my great-grandmother's, or my grandmother's piano from Alabama, and she was a composer and a harpist. Originally, there was a man in Newport who was a, one of her best friends called Thomas Hagerman, and he helped her design the whole thing. But she pretty much, you know, the, he got the stuff, you know, she, she always knew exactly what she wanted. I mean, all of this paneling, which 
came out of the Elms, which is one of the preservation society houses. It was stuck up in the attic and they hadn't been using it. And she bought it all and pretty much designed the rooms around it. I don't believe in having, you know, children and dogs around and not letting them sit in the furniture or touch anything. I think a house is meant to be lived in and enjoyed and that hence you know chintz is the most wonderful thing and anything with a pattern that can be thrown up on or pooped on and it doesn't matter <laughs> the first summer i rehung all of the paintings she had here and i had you know i mean that was a that's a colossal house next door and so it, it, it had you know 10 bedrooms and it was probably 12,000 square feet and I really liked all my paintings. And so I brought all mine over. And that first summer, I hung 300 paintings all over the house. I might add, without a ruler, <laughs> just by eye. Um, and, but it was really satisfying, you know. I, I like walls that are well covered. My wife often comments it's like uh, coming to summer camp almost because you know, the more things change everywhere else, the more they stay the same here. And um, you come back and you pick up right where you left off and you kind of leave your worries uh, at the door. Unless you have an old house and everything's leaking and cracking. <laughs> <laughs> My mother didn't do anything since 1968. So it's every time I turn around, you know, the, the other day the toilet was leaking into the front hall. It's. <laughs> She named the house The Whim, which quite frankly, I've never liked. Um, but for lack of a better name, here it is. And Why so- Why did she name it that? I have, I've never quite known, actually. And I forgot to ask her, which is one of the many things I forgot to ask her. Um, but this, the whole house is, a, it's a combination of things from her house in Washington, things that stayed here, uh, things I brought over from next door and every other place I've ever lived. So it's very much sort of an eclectic combination of just things that I like a lot. And I had a lot of paintings and she had quite a lot of paintings and I sold a lot of hers and hung a lot of mine. I kept these wonderful um, dolphin tables, which I really don't know anything about, but um, I've always loved them. The cane stand came from her house in Alabama and Montgomery where she grew up. This painting was painted by the man who built our house in Georgetown, which was a wonderful ho big house on the corner of R in Wisconsin, right across from the Georgetown Public Library. So this is the library. This is one of a number of rooms that are crammed with um, books. Uh, I have a, that's sort of my weakness. And I finally went to Kindle because my house was reaching critical mass. This portrait was painted of me when I was 25 and pregnant with my middle son by a wonderful watercolor artist named Alan Blagden who lives in Connecticut. And tell them about the cat box in the corner. Oh yeah, the cat, the lovely cat box is in the corner because I have a fabulous Himalayan cat who's hiding from the pit bull upstairs somewhere. And uh, it's, he decided when we first moved back here that he didn't want to use the nice kitty litter box in the bathroom upstairs, but he wanted to go in the corner. So now there's a, <laughs> now there's a kitty litter box in the library. I run a um, Instagram blog with my family called A Social Life, where I'm constantly taking pictures of my wife and my kids in kind of uh, funny, Slim esque Wes Anderson-esque uh, situations. Um, so I definitely remember a photo like that in here. This is the one room that really hasn't changed since she had it, other than pictures, different pictures hung. But this is really exactly the way she decorated it in 1968. She had um, one of the best collections in America, probably, of anti-slavery um, art artifacts and and pictures, and and it's it's really extraordinary. And I've been trying to figure out who to uh, donate it to. Uh, it was during the Kennedy administration, and um, she went to a costume party with um, 
full leotard tights. One side was black, one side was white. And everybody's going, what are you? She said, I'm integration. <laughs> I've never heard that story. You haven't? No. Yeah. I mean, I love this. Uh, oh, this the chicken. You should definitely get the rooster. <laughs> this was the kind of uh, whimsical touches that we both like to add. In, in the house in Washington, uh, Albert Hadley did the house, and but it never looked decorated because there were always thousands of books lying around and little objects and, you know, nothing, nothing was perfect, but it was lovely. Well, that's the other thing. I photograph a lot of interiors and there's a lot of interiors in, in my book. And to me, it's really important that things aren't overstyled, that they look lived in and they look natural. There's no, nothing I hate more than a room that looks like, you know, a stylist came in and, you know, put everything perfectly where it goes. Like, like we I, did this morning, no, <laughs> before you got here. Well, I think there's curated, uncurated, right? So, you know, uh, just not. I, my goal was just to make it look not like a. We should have taken. Mess. We should have taken before and after pictures. <laughs> This is an interesting desk. Um, <clears throat> it originally belonged to Edward VII, and I, somehow my grandfather or great-grandfather got a hold of it. I have no idea. So this used to be my grandmother's um, uh, kind of study slash sitting room. Yeah, um, TV room, I mean, library. She basically lived in this room. Um, and one of my favorite um, photos and probably one of my most uh, shared photos is of my grandmother sitting in the corner there. What I, I love is, you know, just in that picture, it's just all the clutter and um, and how it kind of doesn't look, it's cluttered, but doesn't look cluttered. She had books stacked up on the floor even next next to her chair and, and she collected Country Life magazines and, you know, it, which comes out once a week and she never threw out. I told her she was going to end up like the Collier brothers who were hoarders that died under a huge pile of newspapers. Um, <laughs> but they were everywhere. So This is positively zen compared to what it looked like. This was um, her dining room, and it's my my family room. Uh, this is where we spend the most time. This was a, a painting I picked up in over here in Nassau about 30 years ago from a really well-known Bahamian artist named Amos Ferguson, who painted with house paint on cardboard. This I absolutely love, which Nick did of my mother when he was at Georgetown and it, in colored pencil and I quite frankly think it's kind of extraordinary because he got her completely. These were a present from a friend and I just love it's the Wicked Witch. And those are always there? Always. We're gonna go toward the kitchen now. This was sort of our gallery wall of family pictures of family and friends and which Nick very kindly hung for me. This was a photograph of me by Cecil Beaton. Uh, he was photographing it for Vogue, which is this picture here, when I was, I guess I was 17. Um, and he came and, and did a lot of other pictures as well. Apparently I was quite surly and unimpressed, <laughs> according to my, <laughs> if not downright rude. Um, so this kitchen she redid in 1957 when she first moved in and I don't haven't decided what I want to do yet. I'm going to knock out some walls. So in the meantime, when I moved in, she had, there was this disgusting old original linoleum floor. So I went on Amazon, I bought $350 worth of black and white sticky tiles and um, glued them down on the floor. I painted the cupboards white and bought red formica for the counters and two black refrigerators and now it's a 50s diner so might as well go with the theme <laughs> so i it's it's an impossible kitchen and i kind of like to cook but I'm, i've been used to it 
I mean, it had until you got to it, it hadn't been updated since the 50s. No, right? it hadn't. And I think I, she bought a new stove once. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the kitchens in Newport are like this. Yeah. I did a um, whole story for a New York Times magazine on kitchens in Newport, and you have these grand, fabulous houses with kitchens that haven't been updated since the 50s because they... Because the owners didn't cook. Yeah, I mean, it was basically, you know, the, the chef. This is a photo I took of my mother in my grandmother's house in D.C. Um, years ago, probably. Yeah, you were in Georgetown. Yeah, I took it probably 10 years ago. Um, a little I, bit longer than that. Favorite, one of my favorite, <laughs> not that old. <laughs> okay, maybe like 15 years ago. Um, but it's one of my favorite rooms of all time. Um, was it Albert Hadley or was it Sister Albert? Ha oh, Albert, no, it, Sister no it was Albert Hadley, oh, and the, Albert you can Hadley. see the carpets there are the ones in the living room. But it's one of my favorite photos and one of my favorite rooms. And I'm thinking of bringing those sofas out of storage. Those are mine as okay, well. Okay, all right, but I'm thinking of bringing them out of Nick's storage that he hasn't <laughs> gone into in ten years, and um, putting them in the living room. So these are very cool. Um, these are all first edition James Bond novels by Ian Fleming, um, signed uh, to my grandmother. Um, this one isn't. But um, she was great friends with Ian Fleming and the, uh, yeah, like that. Um, uh, she was great friends with Ian Fleming and he actually named a character Felix Leiter after uh, my grandfather and um, my grandmother says that she's the reason that James Bond is famous because um, she was great friends with uh, JFK and great friends with Ian Fleming and he, she introduced Ian Fleming to Jack Kennedy and um, when he was still a senator and a couple years later when he was president he um, was asked uh, by a newspaper or a magazine uh, what his favorite novel was and he said James Bond and that's kind of what started the um, the fever for, for James Bond novels. This is my bedroom with my wife, um, who is sitting over here with our dog. I told her she had to be on camera, so I didn't look like a weirdo who lived by myself with my mother. <laughs> um, even though you Some can't. of that's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's not eat all the wonderful usually, heirlooms. Well We've cleaned it up for you guys, but there's usually multiple children in here, Legos all over the floor. Um, I tend to, I mean, I love being in this house just because the, the room has, even though it's got these incredible things, incredible, you know, wallpaper and fabrics, it feels still like homey. So when we're in here, I just feel like cozy and comfortable. Um, it doesn't feel stuffy and Really? <laughs> We're um, like a reality show, and I'm sorry. And that's um, um, kind of part of what I love. I mean, <laughs> every night I have a kid in my bed, everything. And this one's usually in the bed as well. This and is your third child. This yeah. is, no, this is my third child. This is my child. fourth child. <laughs> we love just staying here. We love being with family. Um, I love that my mother-in-law is right here. The kids climb into bed with her in the morning. Um, so yeah, this is just, it's just home. Um, we love these linens. This is um, Amalia, which is like a brand I just found. And it is, like, they're incredibly soft. Um, they have, like, a lot of them have a modern touch. This one's, like, you know, goes really well in this house. And it's just, you know, sharing this with the kids, too. It's, like, multi-generational, right? Like, they love this doll in the corner with the, the little notes and the money on it. And, you know, it's just, I think it's been here forever since Otzi was here. And kind of the, someone's like, thank you note is here. Someone put a dollar. At some point, somebody put fake nails on it. I mean, it's just one of those things that like kind of has grown over time um, and has sort of become a fixture. Poems that Nick have, have written that I highly recommend you do not zoom in on because it's really, really bad. But um, it's just fun because then the kids get to see all of this stuff and see all the memories. I think people are so quick to get rid of everything old and then sort of the history is gone and I think we love, I mean, I love history and I, and familial history, but also, you know, kind of the world. And I think um, houses like this just kind of aren't around anymore. Everybody wants everything perfect, no stains, 
and you know this house is lived in. So once again, the perfect opportunity to plug my book. <laughs> it's like you put one in every room, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> this is it without its uh, jacket on, and as you can see, it matches uh, the uh, couch and the bed, and as you'll see, the bathroom. Um, and it, uh, yeah, when I was looking for uh, jackets, I just, uh, I thought this was a really cool kind of fun, fun print. So I love a good bathroom. My favorite rooms to photograph are actually bathrooms and kitchens. He does. Loves a good bathtub. <laughs> and I do love a good bathtub. Um, but uh, I just think this wallpaper is amazing. Um, and the fact that it's lasted this long, I think this has been here since my grandmother. I usually, when the kids are screaming, I lock myself in, turn the shower on with a popsicle, and I'm like, I'm taking a shower. And I just eat a popsicle for 20 minutes alone, you know, because that's what moms have to do to survive. Yeah. We don't give her a lot of alone time. No, so. this is for sure. So this was my mom's uh, artist studio, painting studio. Um, originally it was a bedroom, um, yeah. but when you moved in you turned it into your studio and now uh, during the summers I take it over as my office where I yeah. edit photos and, and do, do whatnot. But this is one of my favorite rooms. I um, love this room. I love the curtains. I feel like that it's just it's a lot of colors that I wouldn't think go together, but, but end up working really well. Essentially, you bring it all in and cross your fingers that it actually works, <laughs> even if it doesn't. Furniture has to be comfortable. You have to be able to lie down and read a book or sink into a big chair and read a book. Anything that you can read a book in, basically. Uh, that's the key for me. So this is my bedroom, um, and it, I might add it's about to be redone, so don't pay too much attention to all the differing fabrics um, and the very old carpet. Uh, it uh, was originally, Nick is very mad at me because it was painted black, and it was really a beautiful, it was sort of a showcase room with lots of wonderful old shell furniture and Chinese lacquer. and pretty fabulous, but I have a thing about light, so I, the first thing I did was painted it white, and he's really not happy with me. Um, and it's just, a, you know, it's a, a little bit of, of everything, you know, more of little boxes. I have my feather collection over here um, on, on this table. All my feathers I've collected over the years. I have a large crystal collection, which is all inside that cabinet. Why do you collect feathers? I don't know, I just think they're beautiful. It's just a little bit of everything and um, a little bit less of everything than this morning because don't open the closets. <laughs> Nick made me clean it up. <laughs> so, um, but I love this room, again, because of the light and, and the amazing view. I mean, it looks right down uh, to the ocean and into the garden. Here's the whole family. Mm. <laughs> so this is um, Archer, and Archer is four. And Johnny, turn around. Johnny is seven. And uh, this is one of our first summers staying here. So now they're both so big, they can share this room together. Um, and it's sort of, you know, it's very sweet that they can, they get to spend a lot of time together here. We, and we try not to mess up the rest of the house, so this is like the kids' space where we have snacks and all the books. We have toys up here. And I think my favorite thing about the, about the, the room is that I, um, I have good space to like the bed because I usually watch a lot of YouTube on that, <laughs> and I'm going to be on YouTube. Archer, can you look at the camera and say your name? Archer. Hey, you. Hey, you. <laughs> okay, we'll say... Let's go on the golf cart. Go on the golf cart. Okay. Let me do the work. So this is my probably my favorite part of the whole house. This is the property because um, my mother designed this garden, and it really what it's a fabulous garden. Um, it it's uh, actually in the Smithsonian. The plants for the garden. Um, so it's, it was considered one of the premier gardens in the United States. I think this is the, the best part in the summer. So lots of family and kids. And this is the, um, it's a gardening shed. 
And this is a rose, a climbing rose called Miss Newport. And for years, nobody knew what it was because it seemed to be unique to this property, this particular strain. And uh, so it was eventually named Miss Newport. It used to grow practically nowhere else but on this property. Basically, no Newport house is complete without hydrangeas. It's the one thing I always associate with summertime. And I was really shocked when I went to New Zealand some years ago that they consider hydrangeas weeds there. I was stunned. <laughs> but I, these, I just love them. I like anything blue in the garden. A lot of the plants are new this year in this garden, so they all look a little unformed um, because it got a little out of hand last summer and I had to pull a lot of things out, but it's really gonna be spectacular when they all grow in. This is the gate between the two houses, which I left there because we can still walk back and forth to see our neighbors. And this is beautiful cra grasses in the summer when you see the heron coming out and the grass is blowing and it's really lovely, but it's, it's still early, so nothing's really grown yet. That's the Temple of Doom. My mother found it at a garden show years ago and um, didn't buy it. And then her landscaper gave it to her as a present. And it used to have a, a top. Anyway, the installation, everything turned into the singular most expensive folly on the face of the planet. So we named it the Temple of Doom. In the bushes over here, and we'll walk closer so you get a better shot, is um, a head of Angela Davis that my mother absolutely loved and had shipped back from Poland in the early 70s. And it's got, you know, peace and love and everything all carved into her head. But I love this piece. This is probably my favorite thing on the property. And it used to, I need to move it again. It used to sit further out in the lawn. Well, I think for me, Newport is a very cool place. And unlike a lot of other summer communities because it's very um, family oriented. The same families have been in the same houses for generations and you know the same people that my grandmother was friends with, my mother was friends with their their kids and I'm friends with their kids and our kids are growing up together. Um, so in a lot of ways no matter where uh, I, I move to or live coming back for the summers really is like coming back home. Yeah, I've always thought of it, Newport as home too, even though I grew up in Washington and have lived lots of other places. For me, it's just total relaxation. And um, I, I just stay at home a lot, frankly, and enjoy my garden and my house. And I don't go to a lot of the big parties and I fly under the radar. I get a, a real sense of peace you know, and uh, happy times, and, you know, f family, children, picnics, you know, the typical idyllic summer. <laughs> grateful every day for this view. Thanks for watching. Go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content and shopping guides.